Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the latest episode of Pokemon Babblers. And if you like what you see over here, definitely like the video, comment, subscribe. And also as a reminder for people that are tuning in, uh, tomorrow on November 17th at 8 p.m. Pacific time, I'm going to be streaming on Twitch. We're going to be doing a mini card opening stream. So if you want to hang out there, join me and my friends as we open up cards and celebrate the release of Scarlet and Violet. Hey, bono has got the good idea over here. So yeah, links in the description, and from the 18th through the 24th, I'm going to be streaming every single day of Pokemon Violet, so the schedule times are going to be listed on my Twitch page, so please check it out, and don't forget to follow me over there too uh, for any more streams and updates. So yeah, onwards with the episode. Hey everybody, how you doing? It's your boy Shaheener coming at you with another episode of the Pokemon Babblers podcast. Of course, joined by my co-host Bono. Hey. And we got a very special guest with us today. It's the one and only Young Slime, a.k.a. Number One Simp, a.k.a. Not Loved by Greg, a.k.a. Pat Dobb himself, Mr. Patrick. Thank you for coming Hello. on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about Patrick's favorite games, uh, Generation, Generation 2, which are Pokemon Gold, Pokemon Silver, and Pokemon Crystal. And so, yeah, uh, yeah. Patrick, do you want to get us started on... Uh, I... I been playing pokemon for probably you know uh on and off again for about you know 18 years and gen 2 is by far the one i've played the most it is actually in my opinion hands down the greatest generation uh love these games it's not just old nostalgia it's actually they are masterful creations and i hope uh after this you'll understand why and agree absolutely yeah completely agree with that uh this is probably the one where like, I mean, of course, my first game was Pokemon Blue, but this was the game, like, especially Silver was my first out of these three, and this is where I felt like I was really getting immersed into Pokemon, where, like, I felt like I spent the most time with this game, and it was so formulative for me that it just, like, I compared everything since Gen 2. Like, every game since then is being compared to Gen 2 in my head. Yeah. Of, like, of how good it is. And I got, so, uh, and I got Crystal. Uh, yeah, no, I have Crystal oh. later on, but, uh, oof, big oof. Yeah, How many of you guys, uh, got silver or gold because of the Pokemon 2000 movie? Uh, I think that might have been one of the reasons why I had silver over yeah. gold. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I for sure had silver because Lugia, you know, obviously. Yeah, of course. That was just like the, that was the Alpha and the Omega right there. That was just one of the coolest designs ever. Apparently, yeah, but like, we could we the, could yeah. all agree that Ho is the better legendary. Well, like, I mean, we it was the first one that was shown. This is how, yeah. This is how Shaft that I got. Remember when Blockbuster was a thing, and yeah, so yes. Blockbuster you could rent video games from Blockbuster. Mm -hmm. Yep. My aunt rented Crystal for me, and then eventually bought me Crystal. That's how Shaft wow. that I got in Gen Two. Oof. Uh, it's Oof. nice of her to buy it for you. Later, yeah. Instead of just always having to restart. But right. Yeah. Right exactly yeah but also you never got to experience the marip line at first so i mean uh, i kind of feel it. i, I had i had magnemite you. yeah i mean it did get something pretty cool later on which we will talk about but uh yeah getting into the actual games so or at least the information we're going to start with gold and silver first and actually before we really get started of course i gotta pop a cold one for the boys so oh. shout out shout out to my fist squad oh yeah so watch the game watch the game all right, so these games, Pokemon Gold and Silver, originally they released in Japan on November 21st of 1999. They were released in Australia October 13th, 2000. They are released in the U.S. October 15th, 2000. And in Europe on April 6th, 2001. So, yeah, this is the first time, at least from what I'm seeing over here, where, uh, where Australia got their game before we did in the U.S., which I found kind of interesting. But, it is. I mean, yeah. probably easier to ship out. It was easier to yeah. ship out to them. It's closer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Geographically. Yeah, but also in like the early days of just like Pokemon games, I feel like that it was just kind of wild west of releases, other than Japan, eh, of course, where they're going to get at, it first. At, at this point, I'm wondering whether or not Australia broke like the street date. Like, I'm pretty it, sure both Australia had it. Broke. You know. And then Australia just had like broken it or just decided, yeah. no, we're releasing it October 13th. Yeah, I'm sure that they had the set release date on there. I'm pretty sure that's just what was intended. But, I mean, there's a lot of stores that break street dates, but they get really shafted when they do. But, uh, yeah, basically, this was the first game, at least so far, where you got to go to multiple regions instead of just staying in the one. 
So in every game that we've seen so far, it's just that you stay in the one, whether it's the Hoenn region, Sinnoh, Kalos, whatever it is. But with Thank this you, one, Iwata. Yeah, blessed Iwata for allowing us that. Uh, so essentially, the main region that you're in is the Johto region for Generation 2. But once you complete everything in Johto, so beat the Elite Four, the same story, you get access to the Kanto region which is all the information basically it's the generation one games you get to go back over there and you go through the whole gym challenge again so you actually got 16 badges all together with gold silver and crystal which is just absolutely absurd and i think this is what set the precedent for when people say like oh they should put all regions of pokemon games in the one it'll be like the best game i think that's this is the game where it's kind of stemmed from where they kind of already gave us that idea that they could but we also saw how they had to kind of slim down the Kanto region to make it work. I, I Well, I think if this, you give them this, more time, it, yeah. you can definitely have a multiple region. Uh, it, it shouldn't be a yearly thing. But I, I feel like it, this one only works because it's... And they've even said it themselves. It was a direct sequel, sequel from Red and Blue. Yeah. Like, uh, until, like, X and... Not X and Y, Black Two and White Two. There, there's no, there's never ever been a Pokemon sequel, mm -hmm. I would say, and so there was no justification for having other regions, and so this is why I think you know Gen Two is just a huge leap forward in what they were thinking is because they wanted it to be a direct sequel, where you were able to uh, go and see your past achievements and do it again through a new lens. So. Exactly. And also, yeah, it's like things change, but I do feel like that, especially like you said, as it's a direct sequel, you do get to see what happened to the Kanto region in the past few years from the events of Excellent. Red, Blue, and Yellow to Gold, Silver, and Crystal, which is really cool. I mean, there are some things where I'm kind of sad that they had to omit, like there aren't like certain areas like, like the Safari Zone. Zone or Cerulean Cave or the Viridian Forest, even. Like, they had to, like, they had to basically just get rid of some stuff, but, I mean, that's fine. I mean, the things that they did get to, at least the things that they showed us, where they're like, hey, this is what happened to, like, Cinnabar Island, for example. I thought that was cool. I mean, yeah, it's like Cinnabar Island is basically nothing, but story-wise, it's just cool to hear, like, oh, yeah, the, vo the volcano finally went off, and it's yeah. gone under. It's like, that stuff I found was really cool. Which uh, is funny to me, because it's like, Cinnabar Island was like you said nothing. Like it would, I don't know how it would have cost space because they moved it to. Well, they cut out what the mansion, the yeah. gym, the lab, and the Pokemon Center, and exactly. that was it. Yeah. So they cut it down to. They killed. Just the gym. They killed off Missing No. Yeah. Yeah. They got rid of poor Missing No. Nobody. Nobody so, wanted it apparently. So when we talk about Heart Gold and Soul Silver, I know you guys yeah. already have that episode and everything. Which link is, is right up here, by the way. Fantastic, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Would, would that have been something... Because, again, the only reason that this stuff wasn't added in the originals is because time crunch as well as space storage mm -hmm. right. in the cartridges. So in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where they have, like, more space, and I guess... I don't know if they had more time, but would all of the, like... At least, like, the Safari Zone be brought back? Was that something that should have been in that? I mean, I would... I mean, I feel like that it should have. I mean, for I mean, me, they blended, as somebody they... who loves Safari Zone, they put the PAL Park there, which, I mean, sure, True. that makes sense. But I would have liked them to show that at some point. But I guess the, the, the bug catching contest is almost a replacement in a way. But I love the bug catching contest. So I, I was okay with not having a Safari Zone. Uh, but having the Seafoam Islands gone was a yeah. little disappointing. Yeah. The changes they did to Viridian Forest is an absolutely atrocious. Um, mm -hmm. Underground Path is whatever, only because, like, I feel like that was more for the story of yeah. one, or Reddit. Or it's like a journey, like, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it gave you, like, that sense of adventure, like, traveling somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. You gotta I, keep I was the... okay with most of the changes. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, you gotta keep the attention span, too, where it's like, you already went through a full game, and then you have a whole other one to go through, too. It's like, you oh. don't want to bore the gamer. You say full game because I was thinking about it earlier when Patrick mentioned it about like how you do well when you go to the next region and like how there was a time crunch and whatnot. Does Johto feel like because it's obviously there's like the stigma that Johto is like not hard but there's like nowhere to train so you kind of get level 
you kind of get like pinned into what your team is because if you don't get all your Pokemon early and you try to switch out later, those Pokemon won't be able to catch up to the ones that you've started with. Yeah. yeah. And so you see the beginning Elite Four is like what level forty four, something of that sort. Yeah. Let me. Yeah, uh... it's it's super low. Yeah. And then you go to um, you go to it's Vermilion's the level first gym 40. in Kanto, right? Yeah, level forty is the beginning of Elite Four, by the way. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so million, what's yes, the ch- yeah what's the champions level in this it, what's lance's level by the uh, end of it level 60. 50 level really? 50 yeah oh, yeah as opposed to blue in the first game whose lowest level is like, 61 yeah Damn. and then his gym team his lowest level is 58, 58. Or, or yeah no 50, lowest level yeah 56 yeah, or 54 yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, lowest is 54, highest is 54. So, yeah. I don't know. I kind of feel like by having both regions, they'd kind of mismanage, like, the level cap. I mean, th- that's mm-hmm. true in Johto for well, sure, because, like, you know, yeah. like I said, if you don't have, a, like, a solid team picked out by, like, the second gym, you're just going to be behind in whatever you catch afterwards. Exactly. Well, that, so that's a, there's three main issues with Gen 2 that people bring up. It's the level cap, it's the no representation in the region, and then mm-hmm. also uh, pacing. And I think that pacing as well as the level gap can be associated to one thing. And that's the freedom that they give you after gym, the gym four, even mm-hmm. before gym four, you're actually able to go left or right, mm-hmm. uh, depending on like how you want to, it, it gives like a sense of freedom and, mm-hmm. and not have to go one. There is one way you should go. Mm-hmm. That's clearly pathed out for you, but they actually do allow you to go multiple directions mm-hmm. which i think as a as game design is great but yeah. when you try to make areas to make the trainer feel like he doesn't or like that he can have access to multiple directions you have to lower the level of pokemon on uh on yeah, each yeah you have to make it equal so yeah that's the problem that they ran into was that like. yeah they gave a choice to the trainer or to the player Right. At the cost of being able to train your Pokemon. That makes sense. Because right. I think if you go to Lake of Rage, like if you do the proper path, they're only you beat 27. Morty. Yeah, they're like yeah. 22 or 23. Yeah. yeah. The, high, yeah, yeah the highest is 27. Yeah, because you can access it basically as soon as you can walk over there. There's nobody stopping you. No one. But, yeah, you yeah. can actually get there before the four gyms. So, like, it, it's a. It's again great if you are playing for the first time and you don't know and you just want to explore. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. However,. When you when you want to level grind, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're pretty much SOL. Yeah, uh, you're, all you you're can really have... do is try and like rebattle trainers, essentially, which they allow you to do in this game, which is cool. But like, yes. you have to wait for them to be available to right. battle them, and uh, yeah, it's yeah, and I get it with some things where it's like they give you surf, and the place that you could go to the surf, then the levels would be higher. But mm-hmm. any place that you surf, those levels are all gonna be at that same cap. And so, until you get to the next place that's not locked off by, like, a requirement, like a badge or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so did you guys, at least when you were playing through, did you guys immediately, have, when you beat Morty, did you go straight to CN Wood? Or did you go to battle, uh, or did you go battle another gym leader after that? Or was it? you have I mean, to battle. Or no, you do have to battle this... Chuck. No, no, my yeah, bad. no, I'm thinking Gen sure. 1, where it's like, you can pretty much battle gym leaders, like, wherever you want. But then also in, uh, when you go to Kanto in Gen 2, I think you battle the gym leader, except for Blue, of course. You can battle them in whatever order you want to, yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you have to battle... I think you might have a choice between Jasmine and somebody else, but, like, yeah, because you have to get the power supply thing. Right. Yeah, for the and that's, plant. like, hard yeah. blocks you off. You have to, like, right. pretty much do a certain order. Right, right. Is... Yeah, I yeah, remember just true, like true. Misty and Brock being like the last two. You could not fight them before in mm-hmm. any way. Oh yeah, because you had to go through the whole power plant thing. Yeah, yeah, you had to get the machine part from the rocket grunt. Yeah, I remember that now. Ugh. Yeah, and then you catch you catch sweet. Oh wait, you don't catch sweet in there. My bad. No. You catch somewhere else. No, that's uh, that's something we could talk about later. Hashtag Crystal Gang. <laughs> crystal Gang. That sounds like yeah, a I... bad hashtag. <laughs> I think that. It's just, it, it was unfortunate that they couldn't make, like, because, again, that is a huge problem, is the level curve and level gap mm-hmm. between, like, uh, tr- like training. It, it does throw off. Yeah. However, I, I'm okay with it, because I feel like Pokemon back then used to be a journey. 
it mm-hmm. it was something you got to play and you enjoyed playing and you didn't mind you know your Pokemon journey being 50 hours long yeah. where now if we can't beat the main game in four hours and start already competitively playing Pokemon or getting to post game yeah and now you a... now you value every yeah. second you have so, so yeah. do you feel like the competitive ruined the single player experience not at all I think no. competitive definitely brought Pokemon into a bigger brighter audience which I'm mm-hmm. grateful for for Gen 4 it's the only yeah. thing I am grateful for <laughs> um so you can definitely tell that the single player experience has just always been the same. Yeah. Because, you know, they, they can they know that they can tack on more later instead of just fixing the problems that they have now and mm-hmm. making it better. Right, right, I agree. But also but, yeah, there were some other things that they had to fix too when they did like limit the Kanto region. So the Pokemon that were in the Safari Zone, like Rhyhorn for example, they threw them into like other routes around Fuchsia City to make up for it and that they also only had one snorlax available instead of the two that you had in gen one where there's just the one that's blocking off the diglet cave near yeah. vermilion so you pretty much had to go all the way around in kanto <laughs> to get to yep. like lavender town and get the channel for the pokey flute and then you like cycle back over to yeah it's wild <laughs> Is. And um, yeah, if you don't know there's there's only one, and you kill it, and then you feel bad that you can't catch it, I feel yeah. bad for you. But exactly, um, I don't mind the only one. I was going through Actually, it right here, just like real quick. Well, how do you feel about the um, the diversity of Kando to Johto Pokemon when traveling through Johto? Because as far as I can see, it's usually about two to one mm-hmm. on every route, like two Kanto Pokemon for one Johto Pokemon. So that's actually the other biggest. So like, like, there's, like I said, there was three major problems with Gen Two, and the second one is that there's not much representation of Gen Two mm-hmm. Pokemon in Gen uh, Johto. Right. Uh, if you look at all the gym leaders out of the eight that you fight in Johto, uh, four of them only have oh. actual Johto Pokemon. Oh my god! As, and <laughs> and they only have three like three Pokemon each, and so most times it's one Pokemon of the Johto. So. It's, there's like only four or five actual Johto Pokemon in Johto. I'm just oh, realizing this right now. What it's the really, hell? It's, yeah, it's really sad. Oh um, my god. That being said, I, I no, yeah, I, I am disappointed that you can't. If you wanted a Houndoom, you have to have already beaten the game. Right. That was my games. next point. Is yeah. how do you feel about yeah. the reverse about Johto Pokemon being locked in Kanto? Yeah, it, it, it's it sucked. Yeah. I no larvae tarts right now. at the end of the game, and it's level fifteen yeah. when you get it. Ugh, that's okay because I mean yeah. we had dragon like everyone yeah. loves dragon air. You had to have yeah. some sort of pseudo Pokemon. Not to mention uh, some of the Johto Pokemon in Kanto are like extremely rare. We're talking like five or ten percent encounter rates. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Exactly. Uh, all all missed opportunities. I think they should have definitely added. More of the Johto Pokemon inside. More Johto to Johto. It seems yeah. like that there's more Johto Pokemon on the Kanto Gym Leaders teams than there are on the Johto Gym Leaders teams. True. <laughs> it is very like, true. Like look at freaking like look at Sabrina. It's at two thirds of her team. Or no, she has Espeon. Then you go to Erica. She has Jump Pluff and Blossom. Like, come on, look yeah, at all you look this. Look at Morty, and he has uh, he has Hunter, two, Hunter, two King Haunters King and a Gengar. He has one yep. line of Pokemon. That's it. <laughs> But that's yep. the same with Faulkner, too. He just has Pidgey and Pidgeotto. Pidgeys and Pidgeottos, yeah. That's so... Oh, my God. Not how even a knockout, just... which is pretty crazy. How much yeah, is finding it's... this out right now? What the hell? Yeah, your mind's blown. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's a little sad. I... That's funny. They could have given Bugsy a uh, Pinaco or... Yeah. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't say Heracross. Heracross, I don't know how powerful it is in Gen 2, Gen 2, but a Pinaco would have been fine. Yeah, Heracross would have wrecked. Put a Heracross. Yeah. Spinarak. But, I mean, Bugsy. you have the yeah. you have the Whitney fight, and I know... Right. Meltic isn't hard, especially if you know it's coming. But right. mm-hmm. you know, for a first-time player or even like you know small children, like that Whitney fight is a, definitely yeah. a challenge. Exactly. Are there any other normal Johto? T- oh, well, yeah. There's Giraffe Rig. I was trying to think of like normal types for Whitney. Was was like, there's Miltank. Yeah, it's Miltank Giraffe Rig. I think. Normal. Yeah. Technically, the birds mm-hmm. because they're normal. Flying. Oh, Smeargle. Oh yeah. Oh Smeargle, yeah. Uh yeah. So let's see. Yeah, Gen two. Yeah, it's Cleffa, Iglybuff, the Togepi line. Which would have made sense to have, like, Togetic or Togepi or something. And right next to eight, the daycare center. Yeah. Eight Palm, Dunsparce, Gramble, uh, Teddy Ursar, Ring, Porygon 2. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. there's awesome. a lot of them they could have chose from, but nope. Nope, they decided to just go with uh, Oh, yeah, it's, isn't Teddy Ursar locked on Mount Silver? 
Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. That's a strange one to have locked. But I guess yeah. it makes sense for the environment. They really, like, sprinkled the Johto Pokemon, like, everywhere. Mm -hmm. They really did. Like, only so 100 that's... of them compared to the 150. All right. Yeah, that's, that's one complaint that I'll always, like, understand. Yeah. It's just, like, no, nah, it, it's not acceptable to have nothing in Johto. Right. And it's so funny that I'm realizing that right now. I was like, oh, yeah, it's Gen 2. It's Johto. It's fine. And then I'm like, oh, my God, there's, like, almost no Johto Pokemon that you encounter. And yeah. then, like, in Crystal, as we get to it, there's some Johto Pokemon that aren't available in Johto, like, straight up. Like, yep. it's insane. It's so crazy, but but it doesn't feel incomplete though. Yeah, That's no. the I don't know how they did it. It's just yeah. you you I guess again it, it goes back to the thing where like it was a journey and you you didn't mind spending hours or even days playing a certain section because yeah. you know you you had so much new stuff and day and night cycles always made me go back to new areas to try at night because <laughs> what if there's a new Pokemon you know I. Right. I didn't feel like that I was missing out on a lot. Yeah. Or trainers that you could battle at night, too. There are certain trainers that you yeah. only fight at nighttime, like the police officers or in Crystal. I think that there's some certain characters that could only be battled at night, too. Like, there's a character on Route 39, I want to say. But also, um, this is kind of like almost a side tangent slightly, but uh, I feel like that when these games were coming out... So, I had Pokemon Stadium 2... And if you had the transfer pack, you could play the games, like those games, like Gen 1 and 2. You could play them on the big on your TV with the transfer pack if you have Pokemon Stadium 1 or 2. And yeah, I, I thought did that the was same thing. Yeah, I thought that was really yeah. cool. I think I played a lot of it on the TV. And uh, yeah, I just CR thought that TV. was a cool feature. Yeah. What's that? CRTV? Yeah, on the CRTV, man. Just curved, like real the glass. That TV with the fat, but fat mm -hmm. booty. Yeah. Uh, I remember that was uh, one of the first times I remember spending with my, my grandmother. She took me to a Toys R Us and got me Pokemon Stadium 2. I remember that very, very vividly. Uh, I don't have that original copy, but I did end up buying Stadium 2 a little bit later on. But, yeah, that was... Uh, I could go on about Pokemon Stadium 2, but uh, maybe we can leave that for Season 2. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so yeah, I love there's... Stadium 2 as well. Yeah, so there are some other changes that they made, at least in Kanto. So, Koga is not the gym leader of the Fuchsia Gym. That he mm -hmm. is now part of the Elite Four, so you actually battle him earlier on than getting into Kanto. But then his daughter, Janine, is now the gym leader of Fuchsia. Mm -hmm. And she adds some Ka Johto Pokemon, which I thought was nice. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, and then Blue, uh, we mentioned already, is the Viridian I City gym remember. leader. I can't remember. Are the layouts the same? uh it's the pretty, gyms I do think, you have to do the invisible puzzle for janine i think it, so. it's the invisible puzzle but it's different it's yeah. not the same yeah okay but then for like for vervillian the all the trash cans are de-electrified so you yep. just walk up to surge walk straight through kind of sad. and yeah. then uh same thing with you don't use cut in erica's gym right i don't think so no you just go straight right. to i believe you just walk up yeah so is there uh, any warp panels in sabrina or did they cut? Did they gut all the gyms in Kanto to save space? Uh, the economy was uh, kind of in shambles in Kanto at the moment, so uh, no, <laughs> are, no. I, thought, I think I that it did portals, happen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure were that they there. were there. Yeah, yeah, probably different, but I'm sure it was there. Uh, but okay. yeah, Giovanna was nowhere to be found. He was mentioned like throughout the game, but he wasn't there at all. So, oh, story. Oh, feels yeah. so good. Yeah, the story was really good. So, the Gen 1 legendaries aren't available, like, at all, just point blank. Gone. But mm -hmm. you could get you caught them. caught them already. Yeah, yeah, they were caught already, so you, so you, as the character Ethan, can't get them. But if you have the uh, if you have the Gen 1 games and a link cable, you could transfer them up via the time capsule feature. So, you could bring yeah. all the Pokemon that weren't available, like the bulk. Did like the, the time capsule erase moves that it sh that they I shouldn't have I think it erase. I think so. I want to say it did. I was reading something on that, but I'll have to verify it. You know what? Let's do that right now. Time capsule. Why would it, right why would it erase moves, though? Uh, Didn't Gen 2 have all the same moves? Let's see. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. I uh, think like they might have changed like move sets or like moves so, at different types. Because you could trade over Pokemon that you caught like Kanto Pokemon from Gen two down to Gen one, can't you? Uh, I believe you can. I believe so. you but can. you have to remove. No, it, you have to get rid of the moves that like the new moves. So I, that's the part where I thought they would delete moves if, if you're yeah. doing from Gen two to Gen one. That makes sense, but. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't I wouldn't understand why they would need to just delete moves going from Gen 1 to Gen 2. Yeah. Well, no, I don't think there's anything from Gen 1 to 2, but I think it was going from Gen 2 to Gen 1. Does that, that mean just sense. like in Star Trek, players can't visit the capsule if they're going to be messing with the timeline? Yeah. I mean, this was probably written when the games were coming out. Like, Cerebi... Actually, today is the 23rd anniversary of Cerebi. So, uh, happy birthday to Cerebi. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I've been using but... Cerebi since, like, 2003. Crazy. I think you can send Pokemon back from Gen like po from Gen One back. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure I, I know that. you can. Yeah. I've I've done it. Yeah. I just yeah. I think that if you had a move, it wouldn't be legal. You had to like delete those like all like new moves. Right. Yeah. I don't know if you, you have to delete it or the game will do it for you. I don't. It might have been able to do it for you. Yeah. I mean, that would make. I, know I feel like that. Makes there's sense. that the Ditto thing where you have to send the shiny Gyarados back and do the Ditto crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course you can't transfer over like the Johto Pokemon the Gen One. Uh, no. Yeah, so all these Pokemon, at least for for Gold and Silver, you uh you could bring up from Gen One, so that was nice. Back when uh, the games had all the Pokemon available. But, uh, that would be cool to trade up a, the Mew from Yellow yeah. or Red. I think you could do it in Red and Blue as well. Correct? Yeah, can't you? Yeah, yeah, you have the Mew glitch available, and so um. Yeah, I I didn't do the Mew glitch back in the day, but I did that on uh, Yellow on the Virtual Console. I did end up inducing the Mew glitch and got it there. Yeah, but, I think I did the same thing when the, when they came out on the special. The, was it the twentieth anniversary edition DS had Yellow? Yeah, I think I did it on there. Yeah, and uh, also this was the first generation where they had uh, roaming legendary Pokemon. So we Ugh. have instead of legendary birds, we had the legendary beasts. We had Entei, Raikou, and Suicune. And all great designs. Yeah. All oh my god, they're amazing. twelve out of ten for all of them. My personal favorite was Entei, but I think that was because of the movie. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, I never I always encountered loved Raikou. Raikou. Fast I, never, and... I never had Raikou as a kid. I never encountered it. Oh I, I had encountered Raikou and Entei all the fucking time. Yeah, I encountered Entei and Suicune, but I never saw Raikou, like at all. I think that's what got me in, I, I know we'll talk about this a little bit later, but the yeah. apricots and the new yeah, new Pokeballs mm -hmm. because I kept running into Raikou and he would just always leave instantly and I was yeah. just so mad I could never catch him. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and also this was the first generation where they split the special stat. So Gen 1, there's just one all-encompassing stat for special attack, special defense, but now it's been split into those two respective areas. And uh, Bono, mm -hmm. you probably are more familiar with that. So it, it made Alec, it was what made Alakazam so broken in Gen One. Mister Mime too. Yeah. I think Jinx was pretty broken as well. Mm -hmm. And then when they did this, it still made Alakazam broken, but yeah. it, some of the other ones fell out as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Dark type and Steel type. New types were added in this generation New types, as yep, well. Steel type. Yeah. So yeah, there was one Pokemon that got modified. We mentioned it earlier, but uh, Magnemite and Magneton became Electric Steel type. So mm -hmm. that added another layer to their uh, to their strategy to their repertoire, I guess. And I All, feel nothing, like... nothing got the dark type. Everything was just a new evolution no. or a new Pokemon. Yeah, no, there was new evolutions, but there weren't any Pokemon that were modified to have dark type. Mm. Yeah, that was the only occurrence that I saw that where they gave it any new typings. And uh, yeah, I thought that that was like I loved both of those types, and I'm surprised that we didn't get a dark type gym leader. In Gen 2. Like, we have the Steel type with Jasmine. Mm, we, got or... the, we got Karen. Yeah. And... Yeah, but it's I not like the Elite Dark type Wait, the Elite Force part of the Gym Leader Challenge, Bono? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but Dark type wasn't that great, considering it only yeah. had how many Pokemon? Right. It was like Houndoom, Umbreon, uh, Sneasel, Tyranitar. Mm. Yeah, if you had a Gym Leader with a T-Tar on there, oh, that'd be a, that'd be a good time. Just have to go in and bring in like like a Hitmonchan or something, but uh yeah now we could get into the oh yeah actually in the bag for your inventory so in it's general no longer one, just a list yeah yep. it's not just the shopping list of all the things that you have but it's separated into different compartments so you had one for the key items you had one for the Pokeballs the regular items so on and I so forth I still think there's limited space there I is. think it's actually like yeah there is crazy limited space for the bag it is it is. But, but it, it's still it's nice, nice to, to have organized separate, yeah. because they didn't have a sorting feature on Gen One. Like they're just like mm -hmm. fuck you. Here's everything. But um, 
Yeah, the Apricorns are another thing that they added in the items list. I think it's just in the regular items was Apricorns. And then it got transferred to the Pokeballs slot once you had them uh, created by Kurt. Yeah, but, uh, I can't I, remember which one's broken. That Like, one that doesn't work. I think it's the Fastball. I th the Fastball works. So. Uh, uh, I can't remember. One of them, it's like, it's the, one of the, them only works the on, like, ball? three Pokemon. Wasn't it like the... Uh, no. Uh, yeah, also, held items were introduced in this generation. And if I remember correctly, your Pokemon, your starter Pokemon, is immediately given a berry to hold. Is that right? Or do you just give it to it, like, you, that's just an item that you give it? But no, essentially... it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's given to you with the held berry. Yeah. So, I guess it's nice to have, like, a little safety net while you're going through for the first time, possibly. Where yeah, it is, the fa it is the fastball. Okay. Oh, really? Well, Unless the work. Pokemon is Magnemite, Grimer, Tangela... The fastball has a four times catch rate. Otherwise, it's just the same as a normal Pokeball. Ooh, that sucks. So anybody well, that thought that was using it on Enter Raikou or whatever, that was just placebo, baby. While it is intended to be more effective against all Pokemon that can flee due to a glitch, it is only effective against the first three Pokemon in the list of Pokemon that have a 10% chance of fleeing. Those being Magnemite, Grimer, and Tangela. So also That's also Pokemon. another thing. <laughs> they added that Pokemon can flee, but it's yeah. only for some Pokemon. Yeah. That's funny. Well, you have the flea, you have the flea thing in Sapphire, uh, the Safari Zone. But I mean, I know it wasn't like regular encounters, but I guess fleeing was a thing. Yeah. So go ahead and do a quick one here for Pokemon that can flee. Uh, it includes Cubone, Delibird, Dragonair, Dratini, Eevee, Grimer, Heracross, Magnemite, Moltres, Mr. Mime, Fampy, Porygon, Quagsire. Some of these you can't even get. Snubble, Tangela, Teddy Ursa, Togetic, Umbreon, Unknown, and Zapdos. So Ooh, that would suck if you had a Heracross flea on you. Especially yeah. with how hard it was to get Heracross in this game. All right. Yeah, I remember catching it in the Crystal Virtual Console. I was at the... The Sac State Library, just on one of my off periods, just looking for the whole time, just trying to find that hair across. And then I mm -hmm. saw that, like, people had, like, methods for it. So that made it I think, a little easier. I think I remember some guy doing a Dream Team quest of Heart Gold, and he went 18 phases, which is, like, 18 shiny Pokemon looking for a hair across Ooh. in Heart just Gold one, Soul Silver. Like a regular one or shiny one? Shiny hair across. Jeez. I think shiny it was 13 is pink, heroes. It? Huh? It's, it's pink. Yeah. I think it was 13 Shiny Spearows, 4 Apom, and 2 Pineco. And then he finally got his hair across. Dang. Uh, um, another thing that they had, too, which is... I mean, depending on how you felt about it, but your mom in the game isn't just, like, a Pokemon Center, a glorified Pokemon Center. She also would keep a your thief. money. Yeah, she was... She's a uh, thief. She saved Straight money. Up. Your money. She's like, give me money. And... I always let my mom save my money. I felt so I bad too. leaving her. It was the only. It was the only time in a Pokemon game where I ever was strapped for cash. Was the stupid mother savings thing. That's, this is the duality of man over here. It's just like, no, she's a fucking swindler. It's like, no, I felt bad for my mom. I had to leave her. Uh, I left her. Yeah. <laughs> the only, uh, the only cool thing about it that I remember is that if you, if she has a certain amount of money, she has a chance to buy a moonstone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I believe Boot so. Stones. Let me see. She also bought like potions. Her... She bought berries. She bought lots of good stuff. Yeah, she also got you the big Snorlax plush, which was cool. So yeah, True. the Repel, the Super Potion, Hyper Potion, Charmander doll, Moonstone, Clefairy, Pikachu, and Snorlax. I'm not sure, um, like where it is. Like if it depends on how much money she has. Like if yeah. it, she has two hundred dollars, she'll only buy you the Repel, or you know. Once it gets like to eighteen hundred, does she have a chance of buying you the Charmander doll, the potion? You know, I think it's that. Yeah. It's it a certain that. milestone, and then it could be anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, okay. she would take uh, twenty five percent of your income every battle. <laughs> Dang, that's freaking crazy fees! Just right get there. an amulet coin for her. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. We mentioned already with like the Snorlax plush and Charmander doll, you could customize your room in this game. And so they have like plushes and tables and accessories and stuff that you could throw all over your room and make it customized, I guess, to an extent. But also what was nice, speaking of Pokemon Stadium 2, if you customize your room in the game, it'll show up in Stadium 2. There was a certain, uh, there was like a feature in there where you could see your room and you could customize it on the Nintendo 64, which would really cool. Like just seeing everything mm -hmm. like in 3D like that. I don't know. I thought it was awesome. 
But, uh, yeah, the trainers now have unique names as well, so they're not just, like, youngsters. Probably Sir Joey. The, yeah. The, yeah, Sir Joey, the yeah, most the famous. Blessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blessed young Sir Joey. But, of course, the Rocket Grunts don't have names, because... They're just Rocket Grunts. They yeah, they're just names. Grunts. Yeah, Grunts and Admins. Who cares? But, yeah, young Sir Joey was birthed in this wonder, game. I wonder how much space Ace would have been saved if they didn't give people names. <laughs> like, probably they just took out much. the name from every... Text text. Files are, yeah, text files are, like, kilobytes. So, like, it probably wouldn't matter. Like, the game altogether is only, like, 11 megabytes, isn't it? Like, at most? Something small, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm sure that wouldn't have been anything. But, uh... Plus, I like the, I like the unique names. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Again, we cool. wouldn't have Youngster Joey with mm -hmm. his 1% Rattata. Yeah, exactly. We would have... Talking about, we would have had Youngster Joey in his 100% Patch Rat in Gen 5. <laughs> Yeah, ugh, Patch Rat. Yeah, I mean, still better than uh, still better than Young Goose, but I mean, not by much. But anyways, yeah. uh, another thing that they had on here was the Poke Gear. So that was just kind of like I don't know, like useful stuff hub. I guess it had your I, had your phone, had a map, it had a radio, had yeah. a phone. Yeah, yeah, I actually think that the Poke Gear was uh, so. It, it's kind of known now that like. Pokemon will always have like a gimmick mm -hmm. and then they will see how it performs and then continue on the line with uh, like in other games. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is the first time you can actually see because um, they, they try a lot of new things in this, mm -hmm. in this generation that's from white yeah. and that like day night cycle and everything, which I still think is a success. But uh, the pokey gear is actually very interesting because the, it's the first time it's brought into the generations, but it, it's the like one of the only things that has a lasting effect in all the other generations now. That's uh, true. something something that they just they loved about the Poke Gear was just having an organized central hub for all of like your stuff. Because again, in Gen One, you if you wanted to have a map, you had to keep it in your inventory, and then it, that took up a space. Where now in the Poke Gear. You can have your map. You can have your list of phone calls, mm -hmm. which you know they did bring back later. But um, yeah. calling people, uh, your mom to call you, and everything. And then you can also have um, the Pokemon Radio. Like they did a lot of interesting things with this Poke Gear. Yeah, that you can tell they enhanced on in later later Ex entries. Exactly, especially with like like the Poke Nav later on too. I feel like that mm -hmm. this, like you said, it really set the precedent for everything. And I never thought it was a detriment at all. I mean, yeah, it was a little annoying when people would call with, like, nothing kind of calls. But it made the game seem more full, I guess. Actually, that... I really liked the phone calls, yeah. even when there was nothing. Because, yeah. again, I there would be times I'm just running around this grass aimlessly looking for a Pokemon. Yeah. And I get a call from Lindsay, and she says, hey, <laughs> my Nidorina, you know, fought this awesome Pokemon. Gotta go, bye. And I'm like... <laughs> That's awesome, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I mean, I had friends when I was in school, but like we, and that's that's exactly how we would do. Like, hey, I was. Uh, did you fight the last gym? Like, what's the last gym you guys fought? And you know, you would talk about that, and you'd be like, oh, this is my prize Lapras. I found it in uh, mm -hmm. a secret cave and, and on Friday. And you guys, you don't know about the stuff right. until you talk about it, and right. it just felt like. The NPCs were kind of like friends you made along the journey. Again, yeah. I, I love Gen 2 because it felt like a journey. It yeah. wasn't It's not just about a... the destination, about the friends you made along the way. <laughs> right. And it's just like, I didn't mind being interrupted just to hear about somebody's ratatata being the top 1%. I, don't yeah. know, I, I loved it. Yeah, because we didn't really get anything like that later on, I don't think. Like, I think that this was the only game that really had like those calls that would play during your playthrough. Uh, I don't remember which one, because uh, I stopped playing pretty much after four for a while. But there's there's one where you can actually see worldwide, oh, like people X and who are... Y had the cross transceiver, or no, the not the cross transceiver, the Ycom. Ycom. And, I, yeah. I thought that was a really cool idea because it, yeah. even though they weren't like showing up in your like HUD, you just yeah. like see people around the world that were yeah. like in your area or like where you were. That I thought that was cool. Yeah. I feel like it was at least like the way that they used it in that and with the cross transceiver in Gen 5 that is more of like a plot device instead of like immersing you with getting to know the other trainers in the world. It was just more like, hey, this is happening over here. You should go to it. But with mm -hmm. this one, it's just like, hey, yeah, I caught a, I saw a Magikarp over here. I'm going to go pursue it. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and plus it was the only way to get um, stones. Yeah. Uh, water stone, uh, fire stone, grass stone, and uh, thunder stones. So. Yeah. And also other vitamins as well. If you fight, actually, Youngster Joey, if you save his phone number after you beat the Elite Four and you fight him again, he gives you HP ups. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was really cool. It was like, yeah, it's, an, it's it was another way to level up your Pokemon because you could go back and tr- uh, fight against other people. I think but... the stone is important because I believe there's only one water stone per playthrough. Yes. And if you want to like catch available. Yeah. Yeah, multiple Pokemon that use water stones. You had to fight that one guy who would give it to you mm-hmm. after you beat him. Exactly. And so, there's what? Poliwhirl, Cloyster, Vaporeon. Staryu. Staryu. They all needed and it. The, yeah. Yeah, there's like at least four Pokemon that need it, so you're kind of screwed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, yeah, we mentioned it a few times, the day-night cycle. There are also some Pokemon that were affected and evolving by the day-night cycle like Eevee to its new evolutions, Espeon and Umbreon. So it can only evolve by... Yeah, it's evolving by friendship at either day or night. Uh, Sun current evolved to some floor. Was that by just by Sunstone? Or was Sunstone. that... Yeah, yeah Sunstone. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, but there I are... I believe some... the Eevees are the only two that evolve through time. Yeah, which that was very cool. And also, uh, yeah, yeah, the first I, thing, I like that. yeah, the first thing you do in the game is literally set your day and your time. And the battery that's in the cartridge will calculate yeah, I love, what time Yeah, I love how it's sick. marketed to kids, and it came out in the year 2000 and said, would you like to account for daylight savings time? And you yeah. as a kid are just like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> what, is, what is daylight savings time? What is daylight savings time? I don't know. <laughs> eh, eh, eh. Yeah. yeah. And there's a, there's a button combination you could do to reset the clock, isn't there? There is. That's yeah. how people, um, like, not cheat, but, like, try to get a moonstone as early as possible. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so there are time-based events based on the, the day that you're on, too. So, as we mentioned before, the bug-catching contest, you can only access on certain days of the week. Tuesdays, mm-hmm. Thursdays, and yeah. Saturdays, baby. Mm-hmm. Exactly. How it's etched. I can't remember if the the tr- the people that give you the items are in gold and silver. Like, t- like they had, like, the whatever, and then it was, like, Tina Tuesday or Wesley Wednesday or something like that. That's what, like, there they were. They were in, like, specific spots in the Johto region to give you items, like uh, a magnet... Yep. Or yeah, uh, I, I know that's in hard gold, gold and silver. silver. Uh, I don't. I know that on Fridays after you beat Faulkner, if you go down to the um, Pokemon Center that's just before the cave, mm-hmm. there's someone there who gives you a poison something, like poison a poison barb. barb. Yeah, yeah, and but that's only on Fridays, and I think that's. I can gold, check real quick as we move on. Yeah, I think it's in the original games. I'll check right now. Yeah, so this game also further delved into genders on Pokemon as well. So all Pokemon, well, most most all Pokemon will have either a male or female to it, unless if it's uh, part of the genderless or non-binary, like Magnemite, Magneton, Porygon, the legendaries, that everything is either, now it's like you could have the male and female, which also leads into the breeding mechanic on this game. They are they are in the original game. They are. Oh, they are cool. Monica Monday, Tuscany Tuesday, Wesley Wednesday. I literally pulled Wesley out of my head. <laughs> Arthur uh-huh. Thursday, Freda Friday, Santos Saturday, and Sunny Sunday. Arthur Thursday, I like that. I think like Sunny Arthur. Sunday. I like yeah. Sunny Sunday. That's cool. The items they give you are the sharp bink, sharp beak, sharp the pink bink. bow, shark beak, <laughs> the pink bow, the black belt, the hard stone, the poison barb, the spell tag, and the magnet. But I was thinking, like, Arthur, like, how the fuck does that relate to Thursday? Oh, Thursday, our Thursday. And also, <laughs> while we were in the general area, the best, uh, they introduced the, like, um, the weekly events thing, as, because mm. now they could do the key track of time with the day and night cycle. The Lapras in Union Cave. Yes. Yep. I remember hearing about that from my, from my friend Travis back in the day. Uh, mm. Not, not our buddy Travi, but, like, I had a different friend named Travis. But uh, I remember... Like, my parents didn't allow me to stay the night at friends' houses for the longest time. But there was some weird circumstance where I got to stay at my friend's place. And he's like, oh, it's Friday. Uh, I got to get the Lapras. Like, what the? What are you talking about? He's like, no, 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 look at this. I thought he was like, I thought it was one of those, like, oh, my dad works at Nintendo kind of things. And he showed mm. me there's a Lapras. And I'm like, oh, my God. It was just, right. like, mind-blowing seeing that. It, it, it's really cool, too, because if you talk to the NPCs in the cave, uh-huh. they will... They will all say on Fridays you can hear like a, a cry coming from deep within, yeah. and that's like 
it was really cool. I don't know, you know, when we were younger, how much you guys actually read the text and everything, but it was just like really cool that if you talk to these people, they would give like little hints about even the guy who uh, gives the or the the Tyro that yeah. turns into the yeah, Karate King. The Karate King, yeah. He, there's text from people about like I'm near the cave. And I'm like, there's some crazy dude who just like loves training in the dark. <laughs> it's yeah, like. Uh... I didn't it's really, really cool. talk to the NPCs, so I guess it makes sense that I wouldn't have known that. But I did, like, go to websites and stuff. I was going on sites uh, like Serebii and Maryland and GameFAQs and stuff like that to get information. But, when you're an only child and yeah. you play a lot of Final Fantasy games when you were younger, like, yeah. text is yeah. literally everything for you, so. Yeah, because, mm. like, my brother played, a, like, a bit of Pokemon, but uh, he didn't play as much as I did. And... Yeah, it's like my friends didn't really delve into like cheats, I guess. And it was like I was really the one that like delved into like all the nitty gritty, I guess. Or at least as much nitty gritty as you can when you're an eight year old boy. <laughs> Going back to the Pokey Gear before we skip over it, uh, yeah. this is the first time swarms are mentioned. It's a very small list of Pokemon that you can get from the swarms, but they are told to you from people that you get the numbers from. So like Hiker Perry, Buckcatcher Arnie. Hiker Anthony will call you about swarms for Meryl, Yanma, Dunspar, Snubble, Quillfish, and Remoraid. So if you want to get those Pokemon, you have to get the numbers for those people. From, yeah, I it was Remoraid, especially that. And also, um, the Pokegear also had the Pokemon Professor Oak's uh, talk show, mm -hmm. where he would also tell you uh, where specific Pokemon were uh, likely, or more likely to be found. Right. I completely forgot about the, uh, that there were swarms in this game. That just, and I was then, like, uh, yeah. Another thing that I saw that I didn't ever realize is that with the Pokemon music, I think in um, Targold Soul Silver it changes, but mm -hmm. in this game, the Pokemon March, which is played on Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, increases wild encounters, whereas the Pokemon Lullaby oh, on Monday, it Wednesday, and Friday decreases encounters. Hmm. Oh, I thought it puts them to sleep. Or is that in Heart Gold and Soul Silver then? It might be in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but okay. it, it also applies in Kanto once you get the expansion card. There's two. Uh, it's like the Let's All Sing channel, and it does the same thing. The March increases wild encounters, while Lullaby decreases encounters. And I believe um, it's only like one encounter. So when you have the March active and then you encounter something, you have to go back and turn it back on in your Pokey Gear. Interesting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So it's not super oh. helpful, but you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it's something uh, that just, yeah. I don't know, it adds more to the immersiveness of it, I guess, but uh, I didn't True. really know about that. Like, I knew about the songs yeah. and stuff on the radio, but I didn't know that they actually had effects on the, mm -hmm. like, the rest of the game. That's really cool. But, uh, yeah, so kind of going back to when Bono was doing his research right. on there. Uh, oh. Yeah, so this is the first game that introduced the egg mechanic and the breeding mechanic. So, the, of course, like, the male and the female Pokemon breed and make the baby. This is where babies come from, is from mm -hmm. an egg, even if it's a male. I don't think there's, but... like, any, like, in-game text that tells you... Well, this isn't the game where you need the incense to get the baby Pokemon, right? You just no. need... You just need a... You know what? I'll look it up, because I don't know if you can do it with a Ditto, or you need to do it with two of the no. same species of that Pokemon in I order to get the baby. I believe it's, like, whatever the female is in the same egg group, then that's, like, the mother will be the baby, I guess. But, um, yeah, but if you do breed with a Ditto, then it's, of course, gonna be that Pokemon that breeds with a Ditto is gonna be your offspring. But, uh, yeah, this is the generation where we found out that Ditto is, uh, a, a free spirit, as they would say. And Mr. Mime is also a free spirit. Yeah. Hell yeah, let's go. No no Mime Jr. in this one. No, we no, Mr. Mime isn't paying child support in this game. I think the genders were a huge uh, yeah. a huge thing in this generation because yeah. not only does it specify female and male, mm -hmm. they also had different stats. Um female Pokemon I was going to say, was that true? Because I thought that was like a playground, like, oh, my uncle works in Nintendo, male Pokemon are stronger. No, that's why <laughs> speedrunners, if you get a female starter, they will reset because their stats are uh, weaker. Oh, huh. I didn't know they they changed it after Gen 2 because they realized that that was dumb, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Gen t uh, in Jesus. Gen 2, if you have a female Pokemon, their stats are weaker. That's, that's fucked. I can't find anything on Sarah, but you have to go to Bulbapedia. Uh, yeah. Also, um, I didn't know about this, but uh, I thought this was introduced way later, but uh, Pokerust was first introduced in this generation. 
I've never, I've out of all my years I've played Gen Two, I've never seen Pokey Rest. I ever. had it. Well, I had it on a Rog and Rolla on Pokemon White on my very first playthrough. It was like yeah. one of the first Pokemon I ever got had Pokey Rust on it. I was like, holy shit! Because I knew what it was, yeah. but I was like, that's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. I, I've seen it in later generations. I yeah. I never but knew not it was a Gen in, 2. Yeah, non-older generations. I'm, like, finding this out right now as I'm doing my research for this episode. I was like, Jesus, what? Yeah, I so didn't even know it was a the... Gen 3. Like, now, I... Yeah. I thought it was Gen 4 and above, mm -hmm. or beyond, but... Yeah. Yeah, I did not know it was Gen 2. It's crazy. Also, uh, one of my favorite things ever in Pokemon was introduced in this generation... And I think Bono would probably have to agree with me on it because I feel like every conversation relates to it. Uh, shiny Pokemon, shiny Pokemon were introduced in this generation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also the shininess—I didn't know this that it was based like the shininess of Pokemon was based on the IVs. That's mm -hmm. correct. And that, like overall, like its stats would be better than a standard color Pokemon, but it can't get a max stat. Actually, really funny. Um, there's a guy who in Gen One. Uh, or it was a guy who was playing Gen 1 for a Mewtwo, and he would, if you know the exact IVs for a Mewtwo to be shiny, you can go into Gen 1 and catch the Mewtwo and look at its EVs and see and dictate, like, if it has, like, the certain right, or right amount of IVs. So you can catch the, the Mewtwo that's shiny in Gen 1, transfer it to Gen 2, and it will be shiny. That's insane. Yeah, it's, wow. it's really cool. I watched that video, and it was, like, really fun that's to watch. Absurd. Yeah, it, like is, it does get pretty down. crazy, um, because if you do do the ditto thing, like Patrick said, and you get, uh, I believe it's females can't be shiny using that method. Mm. So female-only Pokemon are out. But, like, Pokemon that have a higher chance of being male, like the starters, are, like, super easy to breed and get, like, shiny starters. Hmm. That is so but, interesting. And also, I just love how shinies are introduced in this uh, uh, this gen. Uh, yeah. It's a whole event. Yeah. You're, you know, Team Rocket's, like, messing with Magikarps and making them evolve into Gyarados. And you're like, oh, that's messed up. I gotta go stop it. Yeah. But they reward you with literally a shiny red Gyarados. Like, mm -hmm. Right. At, at the time, I had no clue what that meant. Like a red Gyarados, yeah, Ooh, that's... cool. I, I've had Gyarados before. Why is this one? But uh, it's a shiny. Like they they introduce shiny Pokemon and they give you one. It's really cool. Yeah. And I, I get it. They made it plot specific. Absolutely. Because and... uh, I know there's some I people that the didn't like that you were given a shiny Gyarados. I thought it was sick. But uh, actually, let me ask you this too, Patrick. Uh, what was your first shiny encounter that wasn't the Gyarados? It was. I don't remember exactly what cave. It was in Kanto Gen 2. It was a Zubat. Ooh. And I noticed that it did the same sparkle as the red Gyarados. Mm -hmm. So I caught it, but I didn't know that it, like, I didn't understand shiny Pokemon at the time. Right. Again, I was like, oh, red Gyarados, that's cool, I guess. Right. And then, so I, I saw the Zubat. I did not kill it. I did catch it. And then I put it in my box, and then I definitely saved over it later when oh. i did another run through and so mm. uh yeah zubat was my first i would love to have a shiny crowbat but Same. alas never yeah. got to it life goes on i guess and uh bono right. i forget what was yours again uh shiny Talo sapphire nice. on the route right above rustboro to the left of meteor falls gotcha yeah i know exactly I've, I've been dreaming about going back yeah. there and catching it i know exactly you what should do. for closure. I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say mine was Mount Moon, and so that way I'll go back and yeah. I know it was yeah. Gold version. Yeah, and uh, I'll go back and Mount Moon and catch a shiny Zubat. Uh, I did uh, finally get it. In order to get baby Pokemon in Gold, um, the mother has to be the same spe the same species of the baby. Mm -hmm. So it has to be female right. Pikachu, female Electabuzz, female Magmar, female Jigglypuff, and then uh, Jinx with a Ditto, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my... And then the only way to get Tyrogue is Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee with a Ditto as well. Yeah. Or Hitmontop, right? Yeah. And yeah. then I think you can also get... Um, it says here, if you breed a regular Gyarados with a red Gyarados, you'll get a shiny Magikarp. But I believe that's dependent on if the shine, the magic, the baby is male. Then it only has like a 1 in 64 chance. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's how pretty crazy it gets with the male breeding in Gen 2. Like, it, the 1 in 64 is insane. It's the only time where men are needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah my first shiny was uh spinda in ruby version and uh i accidentally critical hit it and killed it and especially, no, you know what that you know, means though right 
It never it would never exist again. Basically, no, right? you have to go back and you have to yeah. find the exact the ex- same pattern again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess you'll never see me again. <laughs> I got like eight spin shiny spindles on X. You can have one of them. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no. It's that bad. was when I was looking for shiny scyther on X. I think. Dang. Yeah, but Which I remember because I, I knew very damn well what ah. it was, and I was like, okay, let me just do a little small attack, critical hit. I was like, god damn it! And, I did get uh, that shiny yeah. scyther, and I did, I, I did the ultimate Gen two trade, the mm. ultimate Gen two. Like you can't get any better than this than this trade, and and, and, and using Gen two Pokemon, I traded a shiny scyther for the metal coat for a shiny Cedra with a dragon scale and then i had the shiny Ooh. sizer and shiny kingdra evolve on Ooh. two separate systems nice. that's sexy. and i, I was like just that. i just like ascended to gen I, I was, I, you know... i'm sure we'll talk about this later but i, I just want to talk about it now can we talk yeah. about the evolutions and just yeah, like totally the new form like not the, the new pokemon of yeah because i mean scyther or scyther was so cool in gen one i yeah. love scyther and somehow they... they come in making a scissor dude like that's so sick yeah yeah because Cedra and the kingdra was like I didn't know I needed. I didn't yeah, again. Uh, Zubat and Crobat, like everyone hated, but I never knew I needed. Or sorry, Golbat. I, yeah. I never knew mm-hmm. I needed a Crobat in my oh, life. Yeah, I, 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 really. Yeah, Crobat's pretty tight. Crobat's yeah. so oh, good. Yeah. Oh my god. Steelix looks cool. I just Steelix wish Steelix so had more cool. versatility. <laughs> yeah, this I, is like one of my favorite things about the Gen Two Pokedex uh, were the evolutions that they built on. Just like just what they did to them. The designs were just so perfect. Like it was a SP natural on, step. On. Yeah, like all of yeah. these, like I can't even, I can't even say anymore because it's like these are so freaking cool. And then they had the They're baby so Pokemon, cool. which were fine, but like, yeah, God damn, no, like, I, I thought that was a really cool introduction oh. to breeding and again, genders and baby Pokemon, which is yeah. really really cool. Yeah, because like I'm trying to think of like, oh, what other Pokemon could I mention? But it's like we mentioned so many cool ones already. It was like freaking Loking, size Politoed. Yeah, all of these. Jesus Christ! Like it's so overwhelming. To be honest, I didn't have any of them. Like, legit, I had a Game Shark, so that's how I got them, because I didn't have any friends that really, like, delved into, like, playing too much. Like, there were casual mm-hmm. friends that I had that played, but, like, I didn't have anybody to trade with. So I didn't have any of them while I was playing. So I just stuck to Pokemon that evolved by level or by stone. But, god damn, what, what kinda... would I have given to have a freaking Scizor or a Crobat on my team? Yeah, well, you can well, get Crobat just... through friendship. Yeah, Where oh, is yeah, the metal or, sorry, not in Johto. Uh, is, that? is it Mount Silver? Where is the metal coat in Jetto? As is Aqua. So it is Park uh, Mine Canto. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. We're we're we're, we're sight there. Yeah. Can you, you get it with headbutt? No. no. It's through this. Uh, it's through the um, bug catching contest. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Right. You get it early. You have it the whole time, which I guess is good if you want to keep it on your team. Same thing but, with Onyx. Yeah, it's you almost trade for an Onyx. Yeah, it's almost the same as like with Crab Bra- Crab Brawler to Crabominable. It's like you don't get to evolve it until right at the end of the game when you get to the Mount Lanakila. Yeah, that one's uh, pretty dumb. Yeah, exactly. I was kind of lucky because I, I went to a daycare when I was younger, mm-hmm. and there were a lot of kids my age, and we all played Pokemon, and so yeah. we all brought stuff, traded, and yeah. talked about it a lot. Yeah. So I I definitely remember a playthrough where like I had like a Scizor at level like you know. Yeah, from when I caught it at the bug catching contest, and someone let me their metal coat. Yeah, I also wasn't... broken ass bug catching contest stats. I caught a fucking yeah, level ten pincer to get shafted by Metapod. Yeah, that was some bullshit. Uh, the, the, the scoring system was so bullshit sometimes, but yeah, it was some. Yeah, it Damn, was some does it feel does it feel great to like catch a Weedle at level like nine, like seventeen and just be like, I don't care, I don't, and then get first place. Yeah. It's like, yeah, <laughs> I deserved the, it. Get the Sunstone. Uh-huh. On stone yeah. to use on what two Pokemon? Yep, exactly. Yeah, some. Uh, Sun yeah, wait, come on, you Blue. didn't use Blossom? Another oh, yeah. Gen Two amazing dude. Yeah, come on. exactly. I had a Blossom. Oh yeah, Sun I, I don't no, know if I had it on my. That, but... I don't know if I had it on my team, but I always like Blossom. Uh, but yeah, Sunkern has the lowest base stat up until I think the Wishy Washy is the lowest base stat of any Pokemon like ever, hmm. which is hilarious to me, but. Uh, yes. But so. Then you also have the greatest grass Pokemon, which is uh, Jump Bluff. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Love Jump Bluff. Yeah. So also. Hey, how's um, my uh, How's my shiny Jump Bluff coming along, Bono? I got two. I got two Hop Ifs. Oh, do, do you have two Hop Ifs? That's I got, crazy. I do I have two, two Hop Ifs. I got two Hop Ifs. One of them's been reserved for you, Patrick. He just never hit me up. I, I appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it's been it. on reserve, man. But. I just uh, you know, Bono was all, also promised me. He's like, I'm gonna catch a bunch of Hop Ifs on Hop Ip Day. Yeah, I was, and then work got in the way. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guarantee you, I'm gonna catch a shitload of Dratinis and Teddy Ursa in uh, November. 
Yeah. Oh, they also added Ursa Luna to Pokemon Go. So Did that they? is going to be a thing, too. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so also with uh, the Pokedex, since they added all these Pokemon, they have different formats of how you could view the Pokedex. So you could go, of course, by the original way, which they called, at least back then, was the old Pokedex, which now we call the National Dex. Mm -hmm. uh, they had the new Pokedex entry, or at least the numbering. And then you could also sort them by alphabetical, which I thought was pretty cool. Especially if you didn't know the numbers by heart, then you could just go through that if you're trying to find a specific Pokemon's location. I thought that was very uh, convenient. I can't remember if the po it went in the when you're looking at it in the Pokedex, it's like a red outline with black text, and then are the pictures for the Pokemon green? Yeah, they're covered by like green. It's almost like the same color palette as the original Game Boy. There's a some... tangent. I love the Pokedex, how it looks in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, totally. Everything for about Heart Gold and Soul Silver is freaking amazing. Like, can there's... we just can we just talk about Heart Gold and Soul Silver now? Like, you know, <laughs> just the bed. You know, like, this game yeah. is better. Yeah, fuck Crystal. We're just gonna talk about Heart Gold now. <laughs> I mean, if you like, you know, waiting half an hour for uh, your move to, to like your moves damage to go through yeah, yeah gen 4 is amazing but that's what i didn't like about diamond and pearl i think we mentioned it in that episode which link again is above right here but uh that mm -hmm. was my biggest gripe with diamond and pearl but they fixed it in platinum, shameless plug was shameless plug <laughs> hey it's your plug did too it, or did they just go uh okay we'll just one time speed this now or like right. two times speed this i don't yeah. think they really fixed it a hard gold and soul silver uh, again, uh, as I I agreed when you guys said that it's the best entry for people to play a new Pokemon, I I completely agree. However, it's 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 just Gen two. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's Gen two. It's, Gen 2. it's come like on. Gen two is the greatest Gen. You can't on. argue, I'm, dude. It's just I was, like I was especially the pixel say... art on this game was so great. Not even just yeah. for, like, a Game Boy Color game, but, like, just as a game in general, the pixel art was freaking awesome. Like, everything about this game. Like, the music, too. I mean, the come Charizard, on. Charizard oh. art for Gen 2 is by Especially far the Especially in the opening cutscene as well. The Charizard mm -hmm. blowing the fire. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gen 2 just doesn't get any better. Yeah, for real. Uh, yeah, also, the type matchups have changed since they added... Well, they added the Dark and Steel types, but there are some things that got fixed from Gen 1. So, originally, Ghost-type didn't have any effect on Psychic, but now Ghost is super effective on Psychic. Also... Yeah, so uh, when you use Lick, um, you actually did some damage. Dude. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Poison now does normal damage on Bug-types instead of being super effective. And Bug is not very effective on Poison instead of it being super effective. So that got completely flipped on its head. But, I mean, yeah, now you, now you actually have a good Bug-type move. You actually have Mega Horn with, like, Pinsir and Heracross. Uh, mm. Yeah. Also, I totally remember when I was playing Crystal on Virtual Console, I did find a shiny Farfetch. That was kind of cool. But, um, oh, that is cool. Yeah. Uh, then Ice is now... Er, it became not very effective on Fire-type instead of it being normal damage. Which I'm surprised that, it, like, that they didn't have that in Gen 1. Like, reading that right now, it's like, that's kind of weird. But... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's yeah. why if you if you have any Pokemon that can you know an ice type move and electric type move in Gen One, you can actually hit every single Pokemon for neutral uh, damage. That's cool, literally, because ice. But um, man, ice types are always my favorite. But I feel like a lot of times, like I mean, of course they get shafted in terms of variety, but some of the designs just end up being stupid too. I don't know. I feel like that. Sorry, I you have Sneasel and Weavile. Yeah, Weavile, but I so. do have I do have Weavile. Yeah, but yeah. for every Sneasel and Weavile, there's a Snover and a Bomba Snow. We don't talk about those. We don't talk about for, those. Every, for every Glaceon, there's a Bergmite and an Avalug. Hey, Avalug isn't that bad if you like defensive Pokemon, but I mean, it's just, I don't. It's just a block of ice. Yeah, oh, it's still fine. Here's 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 another hey, one. Hey, it's every a noble baby. Every, Let's go. For every Mr. Rhyme, there's a Ice Q. Mm, that's that's, ice, that's very delete true. Ice. <laughs> delete ice. Delete ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the no ice mode, which is basically just noise. All right. Uh, yeah. So there's some also some other attacks that got type changes as well, which I guess would now make sense. Where it's like you're looking at them, it's like these were like normal type moves. Where gust was a normal type move. I don't know how they thought about that back then, but now it's flying type as it should be. Bite goes from normal to dark type. Uh, karate goes from karate fighting. <laughs> karate so when i was making the notes i accidentally wrote it as karate instead of karate chop and i got bullied for it so <laughs> yeah it went for karate chop went from normal to fighting and then sand attack goes from normal to ground type 
So I'm still kind of confused as to how Mega Punch and Mega Kick are still normal type moves. Right? Yeah, that made no sense to me. Uh, the friendship mechanic got added. We, like, we touched on it a set for a second with Galbat. Right. There is like a hidden value with Pokemon now that when you battle, I don't know if it's walking with them, but definitely when you battle with them, um, it raises a, a hidden stat. Yeah. And depending on how high that stat is, certain Pokemon can evolve, like Golbat into Crobat, or Espeon and Umbreon into Pikachu, or Eevee, a Pichu yeah. to Pikachu, Pichu to Pikachu, all the babies. It's yeah, all the babies basically. Ones. Yeah, except Togepi, for Magmar and Elekid. Magmar and Elekid, uh, I think, evolve at level thirty. Togepi and Togetic. Yeah, into the Heretic. Into the Heretic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, so, it, I don't. Yeah. It's not broken like it is in no. the games now, where if you max out friendship, you fucking dodge moves and fucking yeah, have that's inbuilt ridiculous. fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sash. Live with one HP because it doesn't want to make you sad. Like what the nah. what is this? Yeah, no, like yeah, that's you. some that's some no bullshit. Way, they fate. added it. Was that added originally in in Let's Go or was that an X and Y? It was an X and Y, bro. Okay, yeah, because I'm trying to remember what the first game they introduced that was. It is kind of bullshit. Like it, it's pretty bullshit. <laughs> That's just hard stop. It's... I mean, I get it. It's for the, it's like for the kids, yeah. but like they should have kept yeah. it like how an X and Y. Like if you didn't yeah. do it, it didn't mm -hmm. happen. Yeah, or like turn off that mechanic. Yeah. But also, they force the experience share mechanic on you. So I mean, right. whatever. Uh, yeah. So also, we mentioned it as well. The artwork in this game was amazing, but also the way that they like made the coloring on the game too is really nice. Instead mm -hmm. of the whole palette swapping from one color to the other when you go to different areas. Now it's like everything is individually colored, which is so much better. It makes it so much more vibrant. Mm -hmm. Like, you can actually see what color the Pokemon are. And, I mean, they had that in yellow of, like, what color the Pokemon were. But now it's, like, really fully realized, I feel like. And, again, the artwork on this game was just second to none. It was just so great. So good. Of course, the last topic that I have about the actual, like, the main release of Gold and Silver is, of course... The final battle. You get your 16 badges, and they're like, oh yeah, Mount Silver is open for you. You should go over there. It's another area for you to explore. Tell me you guys play Pokemon without telling me you play Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. Tell me you're a virgin without saying it. <laughs> also, I think it's like the highest levels now. I, yeah. It still is, right? It's uh -huh. one of the highest out of a single trainer. So basically, you're going through your excursion on Mount Silver. You find some cool Pokemon like Larvitar and Teddy Ursa. And you, you climb up to the top of Mount Silver. And you go up and you see a person in red that's facing away from you. And you go He's up staring to the top, into emptiness. And, yeah, staring into the void. And they turn to you and it's red. They're wearing red. It's red. It doesn't even say a word. Yeah, it just... battles you, dude. I guess, yeah, Bono just got too scared <laughs> of red. You scared. Just the name, the name you itself scared. scared it, dude. Yeah, so basically, you're battling red. That's the final battle, the final challenge. And if you're not ready for this, you're going to get your ass handed to you. It's, I don't even it's... think you can not be that, ready. But just, yeah. the, just the implications that, like, you played. That was your character from, yeah. you know, red, blue. Like, <laughs> sure, maybe if you never played red blue and yellow you're like oh i guess just red and blue you don't really understand yeah. that significance but like the people yeah. who did play it like yeah imagine going up mount silver and all of a sudden you see your old self yeah and mm -hmm. you just like and, and then again if you if you read the mangas and everything you yeah. know how important that right. is and just yeah. like how strong he is yeah. you played mm -hmm. as just, exodia yeah. obliterates you yeah and you're they, like, yeah. they peaked it, it, on just... like being the pokemon master and all they could do is just hide away for training up at the highest mountain of the freaking world and all of a sudden you're going as this new character like feeling like you achieved everything and then you go and you just fight 16 gyms yeah. and you got to fight this one yeah. last trainer you gotta fight and you're right this, if you're not prepared yeah. he puts it in you mm -hmm. all right oh, it, my bad, it's just dude. so great yeah the, the, he starts the, off with a level 81 pikachu like as he should yeah that's right. insane that's the battle too it's just so epic the music the build-up it's oh my god especially going there for the first time and not knowing that red was gonna be there exactly oh, yeah i wish i could like just relive that without the prior yeah, experience the smile on my face was oh, so man. huge yeah i discovered that it was just i i, I won't 
deny. I got I got my ass handed to me multiple mm. times. Oh yeah. Before I finally beat him, and I was happy to lose to him every single time. Mm. Because I think you only get to battle red once after it's just the one battle, and when you beat him, he can't be rebattled. Yeah, he goes away. Yeah, uh -huh. but I think in Heart Cold Soul Silver, is that when you beat the Elite Four, then he becomes available again. But uh, yeah, it's just my God. I like that team battle. way more than the Heart Cold Soul Silver team. I'm like really miffed that they didn't just recopy that team. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah I agree. The, what do they do again? They, they swap out the Espeon, Espeon for Lapras. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, I mean, would make sense if it was supposed to be, like, Ash's team, I guess. But, no, this was, like, this was the team. Espeon, Snorlax, the Kanto starters, and Pikachu. Like, you can't get any better than that. It's a very well-rounded team. Yeah. And, I agree. yeah, what a way to freaking end this game, too. With and that yeah, battle that is just culminating. The actual ending. And the original yeah. sprite, too, for Red. That's just amazing. Because I feel like with the other ones that they did, like they edited or they fixed up the the trainer sprites like uh -huh. the gym leaders but with this one they kept the original red sprite from when you start the game on red blue and yellow it's like trainer are you ready and it's the same one and i think that's so sick it's so sick it's yeah. so sick it really and, does give you like a like a completion on kanto because you fight yeah. the three starters no matter what you picked you're fighting the three starters again exactly and like once you once it's over it's mm -hmm. over also, another thing that reminded me of that, speaking of the three starters, so in Viridian City, there was, like, a trainer house that was over there, where once a day... City. So, the, uh, you could go in there, and you battle a trainer that, like, I think it's once a day, and they have the three Johto starters. They have Typhlosion, Meganium, and Feraligator. And I think they're all level 50. It's really cool. I don't know. I always thought that was cool, just battling starter Pokemon. I always liked that one, like, the ace yeah. trainers had starters. In the cave with Lapras, uh, there's a trainer that I think actually has Bulbous, no, uh, Ivysaur, Charmeleon, and War Turtle. Mm -hmm. I think I remember there's that a, one, yeah. There's a chick on the way to the Indigo Plateau that has the full Bulbasaur line. She has Bulbasaur, mm -hmm. Ivysaur, and Venusaur. Yeah, I remember that so, one. I'm just like, yeah. that's when you get the action, re or yeah, the like game freak down, and you can just steal uh, people's Pokemon. Exactly, that's, yeah. yeah. That's when you bring it out, that's when you bring it <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. Man, I missed my game shark that I had. It was like I had the, the all black one and it had like sparkles on it. That thing was cool. I got Celebi by that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was at the point too where like I started to become Galaxy Brain on like my knowledge of like I would my brother would do this for me, like I would close my eyes and you just play a random Pokemon cry and I knew all of them like that. Like I was just like just mm -hmm. I just had all of them on lock. Even the ones that sounded similar like Goldeen and Caterpie, I knew all of them. It was weird. But um, yeah, also uh, they these po these games finally they got re released on the 3ds Virtual Console on mm -hmm. September 22nd. PSA, buy now. Yeah, yeah, buy them now if you haven't. Like load money onto your eShop card and go buy them if you want. I gotta to figure out how yeah. I'm gonna split it up because I know I gotta buy. Well, I have red and blue on the 20th anniversary one. Yeah. But I gotta figure out which one I'm gonna buy yellow on. Yeah. And then I also gotta buy gold, silver, and crystal. Right. So yeah, I gotta especially buy them, like, on trade. two different DSs. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, so they re-released on the 3DS Virtual Console on September 22nd, 2017. And instead of having the link cable to trade in a battle, that they added the wireless communication feature, which was really nice. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. he, uh, yeah, with that one, there's not the time capsule feature like they had. But, uh, yeah, you could use the mystery gift with other copies of the Virtual Console game to get those specific events. And the Pokemon that you get in there can be brought over via the Poke Transporter to your Pokemon Bank, so you can mm -hmm. get them onto Gen Seven. And, and you Gen also 6. get the Game Boy symbol yes. when you transfer them up. Exactly. So that's really cool. Yeah, which is probably like the coolest fucking symbol you could possibly get. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for Gold and Silver, at least on their own. What would you guys give a rating for it if you had to give it a rating? Gold and Silver. Yeah. I can't. I can't judge these in fairness because the only one I played is Crystal, so I have to leave that to you. Yeah, it's, I'm biased as hell. They're 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 a hundred out of ten. Yeah, they're so good. Um, I mean, again, I understand the the complaints that people bring up, and I think that they're very valid. But yeah, it, it, you you get so much out of just enjoying just playing those games that mm -hmm. uh, compared to like other games in the franchise, it's just like if I had to off the top of my head, eight. Yeah. <laughs> A ten. I mean, if, if anything, it's a ten. It's a ten. Uh, eight. They're all tens. All I, tens. I was thinking about it. I was thinking like, oh, maybe I'll give it a nine. And I was like, no. I, I think I'm gonna let nostalgia play to this one too. I'm giving it a ten. This game's a fucking ten out of ten. And I was thinking like, oh yeah, Crystal's a better version. But it's like these ones were amazing on their own. Honestly, they didn't really need Crystal, but the fact that they had it too was just like Jesus. 
Yeah, this the, yeah. The only thing I get crystal credit for is uh, the it introduces the battle tower, mm -hmm. which which everyone loves battle towers. Yeah, well, uh, let's actually get into Pokemon Crystal. So mm -hmm. those ones were so it was the, basically the definitive version of Gold and Silver, or just Gen Two. They were mm -hmm. released in Japan December fourteenth of two thousand, into the U.S. Uh, July 29th, two thousand one. Australia, September 30th, 2001, and to Europe, November 1st, 2001. And so this is where Australia got it after the U.S., but also from, from gold and silver to crystal in Europe was only seven months of a turnaround time. That's insane. I can't tell if that's lucky or it sucks. Yeah, exactly. You don't have enough time to digest it, and then you get the other one just thrown on after that. It's right. kind of crazy. But, uh, yeah, this is the first game where you can play as a female character. So they introduce Chris, which I guess makes mm. sense. Chris, Crystal. So it's Chris or Ethan as your playable character. Mm -hmm. And there are quite a number of things that did change from Gold and Silver to Crystal. So uh, as you go to certain er as you go to, like, any area, really, uh, it would have the text of, like, where you're at on the bottom of the screen. It looked like this old, like, wooden plank, like a map almost. And it would say, like, oh, you're on route whatever. You're at whatever city. So I thought that that was really cool. And um, some of the areas had different graphical changes, too. So, for example, uh, the burn tower has, like, burn marks on the exterior of the building. So it looked like it was actually burned instead of just, like, some, like, design to it. And there's a bunch of other places that had other aesthetic changes to it. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, of course, adds to the whole world of it, adds to the immersion of it. But uh, there are Pokemon that were missing from Gold and Silver, or, like, that they didn't show, or they brought over from Gold and Silver. There are Pokemon that were there, but that didn't show up in Crystal. So, like, the Vulpix line, Mankey, Mareep, Girafferig, and Remoraid, all those did not appear in Crystal. Which, it's mm -hmm. weird that they would omit Johto Pokemon from a Johto game. Mm -hmm, so the yeah. only way you could get them is by trading them from gold and silver. I don't know. It's kind of ass backwards to me. Mm -hmm. but, I, I agree. Yeah, because, I mean, I don't really care too much about Giraffe Rig or Remoraid, but, like, not having Ampharos in the game is an insult. It's so frustrating. No. I, okay. I love Ampharos later, and just, yeah. but I, it's a physical attacking mon. Yeah. With that, and like you guys talked about last time, the, the typing moves didn't get changed. Right. Until Gen 3? Mm -hmm. Or Gen 4? Gen 4, yeah. So you're having an attacking spawn yeah. use special moves, and it's just, like... Ampharos wasn't that good. Yeah. That's all I don't know. I just, like, I just like the design of it. I don't know. I'm, sure, I'm, sure. Yeah, well, I'm talking it, about design. Great mod. Yeah. And, and now, yeah. I love it, especially with Fabio. Uh, yeah, of course. One of the greatest Pokemon ever but like gen 2 bring fabio back yeah yeah gen 2 you don't you don't need the marine block bring well, back the locks i don't know about that because in gen 2 it's stats read 90 hp 75 attack 75 defense 115 special attack 90 special defense and 55 speed Ooh, speed isn't that great for us and for us yeah <laughs> dang uh am i wrong i might have been wrong oh damn well i mean it does learn thunder punch so that might throw. Oh, you I think off that's there. what it is. It, yeah, because yeah, that's it, its like yeah, signature it looks, move. But it, that's still a thunder move, which is special, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Which is special, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe I was just completely wrong. I thought I was thought I was a physical attacker. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe maybe, maybe it's misremembered stuff. But it's yeah, awesome. it is stupid that you can't learn like thunderbolt, like one of like the most iconic. Thunder, uh, electric exactly. Ever. Exactly. I mean, yeah. You it does learn get, thunder you, though. Yeah, and you get it zap does learn can, thunder. You get zap cannon, right? Uh, not by level up. Oh no, by TM though, right? Uh, was it a TM? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think. So. I think you. Oh think yeah, you TM seven. So silver. Is How does Emperor so not get Zap Cannon? Oh yeah, TM seven. It is TM seven Zap Cannon. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember the the rental Raikou. I think had Zap Cannon in Stadium two. Hmm. But uh, yeah, also the Pokemon in this game have a, a short animation on their sprite when you first encounter them. At least for which the opposing is, Pokemon. Which is pretty crazy, because there's that, and then we go straight into Ruby and Sapphire that has nothing. And yeah. then we get into Emerald where they have the animations again. Exactly. Yeah, and they also had they had to animate, again, like all 251 sprites, which was just... And then, yeah, and add all that have... space into the cartridge still. They did have animations for Gen 4, right? I'm not crazy. I... Uh, 
can't remember. I think they did. I'm Block pretty sure they before, did. So. Yeah. Um, and then Gen Five, they're like, they they have like a repeating yeah, loop yeah. animation. Yeah, I'll put it on a loop. I'll put it on a loop. <laughs> yeah. Also, with uh this, so the Pokey Gear now the collars have like more personality stuff added for them. I don't know if it really had that too much in Gold and Silver, but mm-hmm. yeah, now the like they all had their own specific traits about them, which is also again for immersiveness. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's also now a uh, the Buenas password, which I believe helps. Uh, unlock certain prizes like items and stuff uh i don't remember exactly what the rewards for that were but i should probably double check that uh i think it was kind of like like you said you just go and like you hear it and then you run to the station and tell buena and she gives you whatever right so yeah let me take a look to see again what the rewards were yeah buena's password yeah. if you have two points you can get an ultra ball a full Pulse. restore mm-hmm. if you have three you get a nugget a rare candy and then five, five is all the vitamins but um... wow the swarms got gutted because now you can only do swarms for yanma dunsparce and quillfish they took out remoraid so makes sense yeah. they took out exactly. remoraid they took yeah. out snubbles a thing too but i think snubbles encounterable and throughout also, now what's nice, especially for people that use the Apricorns, is that Kurt can now form multiple balls with if you have the same color Apricorn. And so instead of going one at a time, you could just give him like 20 red Apricorns and he'll make them all. So mm-hmm. that's at least good for sake of time because it'd take a full day for him to like make everything, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> okay, uh, here's a new thing. They added a move tutor to Goldenrod City who only appears on Wednesday and Saturday who will teach your Pokemon for 4,000 coins, uh, Flamethrower, Ice Beam, and Thunderbolt. Wow. That's the best one right there. Yeah, this is yeah. pretty much the best three. So I think you exactly. can do it as long as you have coins. Because those are like, if you have coin. <laughs> but... If you have coin, yes. If you can make purchases. Yeah, because Ice Beam, as I've said before, is my favorite move of all time. And Flamethrower and Honestly... Thunderbolt are comparable. Honestly, that's probably why they got rid of Mareep. Mm. Because if they, if you had Flaffy or Ampharos by the time you got to Whitney, and then you do the four thousand coins and you get Thunderbolt, you're probably one shotting like a lot of things. Yeah. But also, when did you get Abra? Because I feel like Alakazam could probably do that. And it's Goldenrod. Yeah. Or at least with Elemental Punches, you could do that for sure. But um, yeah. Now the friendship can be raised even quicker when you. Uh, train your Pokemon on the route that it was acquired, whether it was caught or hatched. So, mm-hmm. oh, that's right, yeah. that was a thing. Never yeah, that. yeah. So that was one of the ways that you could uh, raise his friendship, other than like the massages and. Oh, we never talk about Sudowoodo. Yeah, yeah, Sudowoodo exists. So, uh, oh, essentially, oh, oh, oh. when you're finishing up in Goldenrod, there's a weird-looking tree that's blocking your way from getting to Ecrotique, and so you got to talk to. A uh, person, that, well, in Crystal, you got to talk to a person that's over at the tree, then go over to the the nursery that they have in uh, in Goldenrod, and they'd be like, "Hey, use this uh, this watering can over there, the squirt bottle, mm-hmm. and you use that on the tree." And it turns out it's a Pokemon. It's a Rock type Sudowoodo because it looks like a tree. It's Sudo. It's fake wood, and it's mm-hmm. Rock type, so it looks like a tree, but it isn't Grass type. So that's the only chance that you get to catch Sudowoodo. And of course, this is before Bonsly as well. So Well, right. it's it's not a grass type until Gen 8. You're right. Or Gen you mean 9. Gen 9. Yeah, yeah terrastalizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sudowoodo so becomes don't real. Don't worry. It, it, it's it'll, a, it'll become grass. It'll happen. Also, the Ruins of Alf gets expanded on here, which we didn't talk about yet. But uh, basically, there's a whole area involving the Pokemon Unknown, which are Psychic Type, Single Stage, and... There's 26, at least in this game, there's 26 variations of unknown, all based on the letters of the alphabet. Is mm-hmm. it 28? Because there's a now question there's, mark. In now this. there's 20. Or oh, at okay. least there's 28. That was introduced in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, in this, it was just the 26 letters instead of the characters. But uh, yeah, so they had those, and they expanded on it more with the puzzles that you do to unlock them. There's also new passages, like prizes that you get when the requirements are met. They really expanded it in this one. There's like secret messages you would get once you go further into the ruins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like red so, rum, red rum. Exactly, red rum. Yeah, so you just get a lot of cool stuff with it. And there's different unknowns that get unlocked depending on the puzzles that you uh, that you complete. You complete yeah. yeah. And I, I like um, I like what they did in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Where they, like, intro- like, they made it part of the Arceus 
Like mm-hmm. they, yeah, be, because they made it like they made it actually useful. Or in like Gen two, they they're just there. Exactly. You catch all of them, and nothing happens. It, I, I it, there was supposed to be something that was to go along with the alpha runes, right? With like Celebi, mm-hmm. but that got all like gutted, I guess, right? Right. I, well, mean, I, I think, don't remember. Yeah, I think, yeah, because basically you couldn't get Celebi, well, normally in this game, because it was a feature on the Japanese one where they actually had, like, like mobile events, like, with their cell phones, that, and you would actually connect to the internet. It was like Wi-Fi events, basically, uh, before what we know as Wi-Fi events. So you connect it to your phone and have, like, a link cable thing, and that's how you download the GS ball from the internet, and you would get that in your game, and then you get Celebi by that. But we didn't get right. that over here. So we no. didn't get that until the virtual console release. I mean, it's amazing that they even, like, gave it to us. Like, when I heard about that, I was just, like, stunned. Yeah, I was. I kind of wanted to get one on the virtual console. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I want to get the virtual console just, like, just to experience that. Because yeah. I've never gotten to actually do that event. Yeah, it was... Oh, my gosh, that was cool. I That's the reason why I got Crystal on virtual console. So I could get the Celebi like that. It was it was awesome. It was only level 30, so it was... Or I think it was... Yeah, I think it was level 30. So it's kind of... You had to make sure that you had a Pokemon weak enough to battle it. Also, there were some Pokemon that get color, color changes... Uh, just to kind of match their the the regular artwork, so Spinarak, mm-hmm. Magnemite, and Sneasel all got color palette swaps. So because they kind of looked a little bit weird at first, like on the games compared to the artwork. Well, Spinarak so. was blue. Yeah, it was like <laughs> blue green. or purple. Yeah, and they finally yeah. made it green. Yeah. So basically, when you encounter the legendary beast in this uh, playthrough of uh, Crystal, that Suicune kind of just hangs around and like notices you. And there's a character that shows up. It, you find out his name is Yusin. He's like, "Oh my God! He like he recognized you. You are the chosen one. I must I must follow you and follow Suicune because I'm obsessed." So that adds more plot and more expansion to the story of Suicune, which I thought was really cool. Instead of them just being like, like with the legendary birds, you just kind of just happen to stumble upon them. They give more context of why it's important. Another thing they added too. So they added a patch of grass uh, west of Violet City. So I think that's to help with. So this is gonna help with people that somehow struggled against the Bugsy gym battle, where they allowed you to catch Growlithe on that route. It's basically like on route was I think it's no, it's not thirty nine. It's basically whatever's west of Violet City. They I think allowed it's thirty three. Yeah, yeah, they allowed you to catch Growlithe. So yeah, having a fire type on your team against the bug types, it makes sense. But also, it's like why do you? You could have caught Pidgey and be okay, but I don't know. Well, uh, Somehow Bugsy also struggles is... with uh, fire type. Yeah, it's a fire type shortage for sure. Yeah, I yeah, mean, you couldn't catch, you can't catch Houndoom or Houndour until or, post game. Or and you... Slugma, you couldn't catch the way later as well, right? True. Yeah. And if you wanted, um, Magma. If you didn't choose the fire starter. <laughs> yeah, you're you're praying that you get a Magby as an egg, and. Uh... Mm-hmm. Which we so can yeah, go into. I can understand why they like added yeah. Growlithe um, to the side. Right, and it is nice that they like added. It. It. Yeah, and it's also yeah. a great Pokemon too. So I realize True. now that you didn't add it, and I hate you for it. But mm. hashtag Crystal Gang representing. We also get the Odd Egg from the daycare center in Crystal. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah which so... ne- ha- contains at least one of the baby Pokemon. I believe it's random chance every time you start your game. Mm. Yeah, so it can so be you can get any uh, of the babies. Pichu. Yeah, any of the babies. And uh, fortunately, our version is shafted because I think ours is a 15% chance to be a shiny, whereas in the Japanese version, it's a 50% chance. That's so crazy. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So we get 15% chance for any of the baby Pokemon to be shiny. Yeah. But I believe there's a glitch where you can get two. I just don't know if the odd egg that you clone is going to be the same egg or if they can be different. Mm, I don't know. Let somebody know. Uh, tell us in the comments. You could let us know over there. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> but, um, yeah, also, Patrick, you mentioned it earlier, but the Battle Tower is introduced in this game. So this is the very first time we got Battle Tower. Uh, I didn't go through it myself. Uh, did either of you guys really go through Battle Tower? I did a couple rounds. So that was about it. Yeah. Just uh, battles. Yeah. So, yeah, you can't nothing, use nothing. The, the Uber Legendary, so you can't use Mewtwo, Mew, Lugia, ho or Celebi. And, um, yeah, you can't use two of the same hold item. Or using two of the same Pokemon, either. So, 
Yeah, it's just basically just set up the the standard for battle towers from here on yeah, out. Yeah, it definitely it got it's the best in Emerald, but it started in when you beat Karen and she has her hissy fit that you beat her, you uh, she Claire. basically yeah Claire, Claire. Yeah. sorry not Karen sorry. Uh, so Claire has a it's Karen. It's your Chodo moment. girls, right? Yeah. All right, come Sorry, on. Claire had a Karen moment, and was like, "You didn't beat me. I want you to talk to my manager." And so it's even funnier when you say it that way because Karen in game is like the complete opposite of Claire. But go ahead, yeah, continue. Exactly. Yeah, because Karen's like, "Do what makes you happy," but Claire's just like, "Fuck you." <laughs> yeah. So you have to go down to the drag, uh, the dragon's den, which is now unlocked after you beat Claire. Sorry for the confusion. I got to get my girls right. But, you do. Um, yeah, so in, the, in Gold and Silver... I don't understand you have how to you get, get confused. There's only three of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm not the simp that I thought I was. Yeah, so basically... No, four. My bad. Four. I was going to say, wait a minute. There's one uh, I forgot about Patrick's girl, Jasmine. I'm sorry. <laughs> how could you? Best girl, dude. I was, I was too distracted what about Janine, by Claire and bro? Karen. Janine? What about her? What about her? She can't cancel, dude. Come on, let's go. Can't We're talking about Jodo. Oh, oh, just Jodo girls. Okay. Uh, the Kimono girls? All five of them? Seven. Seven? Oh. No. Eight now. Well. Sylveon? Now, but I mean, like. Yeah, but they didn't give us. They didn't like... give us Glaceon or Leafeon Kimono girls. In oh, Hope I mean, Silver. we didn't even need Glaceon in, in general. Fuck so, you. you. Know. Fucking rat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways. So, going down to the Dragon's Den. And now you have to enter the shrine and go through, like, a questionnaire with the elders. And if you answer the questions right, basically talking about, like, love and compassion and all that bullshit, they give you a Dratini with extreme speed, which you mm -hmm. can't normally, like, it can't normally learn that, which is really cool. Yeah, and then Karen, or, sorry, Claire admits defeat and is like, okay, here's the badge, now get him out of face. Uh, it's the, the rising badge that she gives you, right? That's what it is? thought it was the dragon badge. Dragon badge. What's the rising badge? Am I, am I going crazy? Yeah, the rising badge. Oh, that's a little fucking the dragon. dragon badge, Bono. The dragon badge. Come dragon, on. Hey, the dragon hive badge. Nuts. The flame badge. Yeah, but also with the the uber legendaries in this Lugia and Ho Oh, you can only get them when you get to Kanto. It's another thing that's locked by the the region. So Ho Oh, you could only catch once you caught all the legendary beasts so you have to go through the whole suicune plot and catch it in cerulean uh with lugia you could only capture it when you get the silver wing which you get in pewter city but it is nice that you get both of them and i think both of them they are at level 60 when you battle them oh also i forgot to mention with the legendary beasts earlier that they get their own theme song as well and that's the first time that like a legendary pokemon gets their specific music Instead of all of them having the same battle music. So cool. I thought that, that was awesome. And I know Ho is holding Sacred Ash. Yes, one of the best item it. one of the best items in the game in my opinion. True. Yeah. It's freaking OP as hell. It's the only way that you can get it. Uh yeah, and as I mentioned before, Suicune has more of a prominent storyline in Crystal, of course, because the box legendary. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like expanded of like it has all this mythos to it. And you have to constantly, like, you constantly see it on your adventure, and you see him will follow right after that. He'll battle you a few times, and at the end of it, you finally will battle it and capture it. Uh, you catch right it after of, the rocket stuff. Yeah, after all the rocket stuff is over, you catch right it right out, right in front of the tower to catch a. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, no, no, you catch Suicune at the Cerulean Cape, don't you? No, that's Heart Gold Soul oh, Silver. Right, right. My bad. Yeah, but it is cool that like that they give one of them at least something. Not only does Suicune can have its own prominent story. I feel like mm -hmm. Ho also has a story. Like it the does. Kimono girls yeah. talk about burning city or the burning tower a lot. And yeah, no one talks to... about Lugia. Yeah, because we had a whole movie on it. <laughs> we had a whole movie. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah, yeah we don't but, need you know, anything else. We all know the origins of Lugia, right? Yeah, Lugia yeah. is done and dusted. Yeah. We want... Well, I mean, like the like the the age of Ho Oh creation. has begun. Like, the dude was, like, on drugs and came yeah. up with Lucia. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, the best inspiration comes from people that are fucked up, I guess. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. So, also, we never really went over it, but uh, the plot of Gold and Silver and Crystal. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we should yeah. go over that right now. Cause I have actually thought about this, and so I have actually put it into song, and it goes a little something like this. Are you ready? No, seriously. Be a master. Everybody wants, Everybody to, show wants to show the skills. skills. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. you start as a new trainer in New Bark Town, which just so happens to be the town with the professor Elm, who stud. I believe he studies Pokemon eggs. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he's the founder of like uh, baby Pokemon. I guess I don't know because yeah. you don't really like see him anything. It's like obviously later on, it's like yeah, he's baby Pokemon. But I think in the games, he's just the Pokemon professor. Yeah, yeah, they talk and about so... him a little bit, I believe. Uh, I'm yeah. pretty sure yeah. that the girl um, in the town also yeah. like said that like like not created, but like he's like not Lyra, founder, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's like one of the NPCs okay. that are in uh, yeah, so NPC, town. Like, but she's like okay. yeah, like he like is the leading professor and studier of uh, baby Pokemon. Yeah. All right. So anyway, he asks you to go do a uh, an errand for him and gives you a Pokemon to take with you. And if you're like me, you have a Quillava by the time you get back. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, Quillava by the time you get back, and that's all on the way. Uh, you, uh, uh, before did you, you leave. Ever, did, you act, did you see the Professor Oak's reaction if you actually do have a uh, your starter leveled up? Or Yeah. Yeah. What? He, does like, he does have an exclamation different... Yeah, he has an exclamation point over his head. And he goes, "Your Pokemon changed," and then like, then he continues with the like dialogue. he's shocked yeah. that a Pokemon evolved. <laughs> right? Yeah, he's like, "How the hell did you do that, son?" <laughs> Damn, I son. did. Uh, I think I leveled up every patch of grass like on the way there. Is why I did. Is how I got it. Oh, gotcha. Were yeah. you just like, I want to see the next evolution, or did you just like? I was just bored. Like every okay. like big block of grass, I was like, I gotta level up at least once there. Mm. Wow, that's the dedication. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I so I had Quilava, and uh, before you leave town, there's a little kid that's like peeking in on the uh, professor's on the side, lab, yeah. and every time you go out to him, he like throws you, <laughs> like in the you. air. Yeah, he kicks, kicks you. Yeah, exactly. And on your way back after delivering, what what is it? You deliver the egg to Mr. Per Mr. Pokemon. You deliver no? the yeah. egg, yeah. yeah. To Mr. Yeah. Pokemon, and then Professor Oak's there. Yeah, well, yeah hold Professor on. Oak before, shows before up. you go, like, hold up. Who's who's everyone start? Like, obviously, we know that uh, oh, Bono picked uh, Cyndaquil. Cyndaquil but... well, my first playthrough on Silver, I started with Totodile, but then on Crystal, I did Cyndaquil. Or yeah, but yeah, Quilava I'm... up until Gen Five, Quilava was my favorite Pokemon of all time, like bar none. Yeah, uh, I I think I have one playthrough in out of my hundreds of playthroughs where I actually picked uh, Chikorita, but most of my playthroughs are. Uh, Cyndaquil and Totodile. Yeah, Jeff Heal. Yeah, it's kind of like Gen One all over again. But you're gonna talk about the the old man and the running and the running shoes, but oh, that doesn't no. happen I mean, in that game. No, but so uh, yeah, yeah. You, you guys uh, play? You've... Did you guys ever start the game at night though? I think so. Yeah, Once or twice. I actually really. Yeah. I really liked it because like you get the my one of my first playthroughs actually caught a uh, spinner or Spinda. Mm -hmm. No, spinner Sorry, spinner and I was trying to use like its evolution way and and for uh, what's it uh, Aridos. Aridos, thank you. And it's just so bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it really uh, is. I but never I mean, used I, it because uh, again in the day you find Ratatatas and Pidgeys, but at night yeah. you get you know Spinarax and Hoot Hoots. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. like you know seeing Hoot Hoot for the first time and like trying to catch it and getting Noctowl, uh, which I think Noctowl's broken with hypnosis. And, Journey meter combo, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I think if you're if you're ever gonna start a playthrough, like you should do it at night because you just get different wild different counters. But yeah, basically you give the egg to Mr. Pokemon, and as soon as you exit his house, Professor Elm, he's like, "Oh my God, something bad has happened! I need you to come back like right away." So as you're starting to head over there, you go in back. You're about to leave Cherry Grove. And you get knocked over by this kid that you notice I was peering into the lab in New Bark Town. It's like a red-haired kid. And he's like, I'm going to kick your ass. And you kick his ass. And he runs off like a little bitch. You go back over. You talk to some pigs, unfortunately. And they're like, hey. Uh, they try to arrest you. Let's, let's yeah. not forget that. They try yeah. to arrest you first. Yeah. And they're like, hey, did you catch that kid? Like, what was his name? And then that turns out to be a rival. So, of course, you name it Bono because, you know, you got to name it after a rat. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So after that, it's just like, okay, why don't you do the Pokemon challenge and see if you can find this kid. I think he comments that uh, Professor gave you a Pokedex, which is why he yeah. urges you to take on the uh, gym challenge. Exactly. Yeah, so you go through your gym challenge and you're... Well, first you say you know, goodbye to mom yeah. and then she asks you to save her money. Uh, and yeah, and then she, steals, she steals from you. <laughs> yeah, she's like... But yeah, I... you eventually just go on your challenge. Yeah. So, so what do you think of the first gym leader, Faulkner? Um, he... Missed opportunity. Good I design, so but yeah, missed opportunity. Could have used Hoot Hoot Love the Owl. Loved the, um, the gym. The gym, yeah, where you go up and then... Or it was... That's in... hard gold, soul, silver. Oh, in Gen gold, two, gold, silver. Yeah. or yeah, in gold and silver, it just it's just he has fans. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Only fans. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I just have like that whole like, you, you still have the opposite. Like you can go along the sides, right? Like that. Yeah, you can still yeah. skip all the trainers, mm-hmm. which is cool. I mean, I I never did, but you yeah, know. All right. Of course. Uh, cool you idea. also visit Bell Sprout Tower, which has some Ooh. cool lore behind it. Like the the pillar that holds the entire tower up is supposed to be like a stalk of a Bell Sprout. Mm. Yeah, that sways. That's why it moves. Exactly. Which makes sense now because now we know Dynamax Pokemon were a thing, so it could be uh-huh. like it, sometime in Johto a, di- a Bell Sprout Dynamax and then died. <laughs> <Instead. laughs> uh, I mean... Speaking of which, also in the first area is the. I, I don't know if you guys have ever done. I. I... I love doing this challenge where like you have you can only use traded Pokemon, in game traded oh, Pokemon. I've never done that. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So like, yeah, you catch a, it's the one of the first trades of Bell Sprout for an Onyx. Onyx, right? Yeah. yeah, and I like how in this one because in traded Pokemon were in red and blue, but in this one there's like a few more. So you can actually get a full team of like six or seven. Yeah, of so just traded Pokemon basically it's like it's Onyx, Machop, Voltorb, Dodrio, Zatu, Magneton, and Aerodactyl. Yeah, but this trade the the Dodrio for a female dragon hair? God, yeah. that's wild. It's that's brutal. pretty shafted. Yeah, exactly. But in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, isn't there one for a Haunter? And you're like, oh, cool, I can get a Gengar. And then you get yeah. distant because it has an Everstone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a meme. I, I hated it. that one. I hated that one so much. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you're going through your gym challenge and uh, you run into your rival a couple times. Oh. Uh, well, I was just saying, like, if you go to the Battle Tower, like, you yeah. see your rival. And how in he gets a comment saying like how he's so mean to uh, his Pokemon that he treats them poorly. Yeah, and he doesn't care because you know he only cares about like strength and only wants strong Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that comes into play because like in Red and Blue, Gary or you know your Blue, your rival, is always like you know smell you later, and everyone yeah. always hated that. He had like a distinct rivalness about him. Mm-hmm. Always mm-hmm. one step ahead of you was the. Pokemon master before you, but you beat yeah. him. This guy's just a bully. Yeah. Also, he's what a I, bully, but the character development throughout the whole story. Also, is what really I like nice. too is that most of the time he has a Galbat with him, and even uh-huh. at like at his peak where everything is leveled up, he doesn't have a Crobat because he doesn't treat his Pokemon with love. And then when you finally beat him that last time, he's like, "Man, I should really like yeah, take a look at myself." And then when you see him again at Indigo Plateau, there he is with a Crobat. Yeah, that's again. That's it's just really cool, and it's not like. But when you fight him at the Indigo Plateau, it's not like you've seen him again or, like, know that he changed his ways for sure yeah. until you see that he has a Crobat. And you go, oh, he's starting to learn to, like, care for his Pokemon. Mm-hmm. I think that's just really cool character development. Exactly. But he never got arrested for stealing that first starter. That's <laughs> uh, okay. He yeah. beats up his dad, who's Giovanni. So. Yeah, exactly. Which we don't find out till way later. But, uh, so I, yeah. I looked it up in Heart Gold. Uh, the so there is a Haunter trade, but it's not the one you're thinking of. Yeah. That one's uh, in Diamond and Pearl. Right in Heart Gold. Another Silver, reason why I hate Diamond and Pearl, dude. That's why. <laughs> this guy, uh, he wants a Haunter in exchange for a Zatu. Mm. Okay, that's fair. And then yeah. just because I had uh, while you guys were talking, I kept scrolling down. There are a couple other trades that they had, but the cool one that I saw is you can actually trade uh brock for a pokemon so what? if you after you beat brock on saturdays between 17 and 20 which is what five on no with gold and silver crystal no hard gold soul silver oh gotcha in on uh was it two five so f- between five and eight i think you will find brock at the entrance to diglett's cave when you talk to him he will talk about pseudo wudo after a while he will talk about its pre-evolution bond slide. He will ask you for one in exchange. He will give you a Rhyhorn, which knows Thunderfang. So if Whoa. you do trade it, it says OT Brock. That's... No, really? 
What? That's so cool. That's dope. Yeah. You, know, you, can, you can trade Jasmine anything for her Steelix. Does it say OT Jasmine? Yeah. yeah, it does say OT Jasmine. Oh, that's so oh, cool. Man. Dude. And you I get to... with uh, Pikachu. Yeah, with Lieutenant Surge for a Pikachu. And, um, I don't remember yeah, if like traded Pokemon Steven. can be shiny in Gen 4. I Honestly, like if that's a thing, I got to go back and like keep trading yeah. for fucking yeah. shiny right now. Also, from Brock. Uh, trading uh, Steven, like you trade a Fortress for a Beldum and it has OT Steven on there. That's cool. Yep. I like that. Man, so, this is cool. Man, Heart chalk up, an- so up another point for Heart Gold Silver, but yeah. back to Crystal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you get to Azalea Town, which is where the second gym is at, and mm. you're noticing that there's a bunch of like Team Rocket grunts all over the Slowpoke well. Well, actually, and... before that, you get solicited to buy a Slowpoke tail for a million Poke yes. dollars. Yes, but you can't buy it because you got no money. You got no money. Because your mom steals and... it all. Your mom yeah. stealing it. <laughs> and before that, as actually the patch of grass where you can find uh, your first Hoppip. Yeah. You can catch that and yeah. get it. So. And yeah. then just sweep the game. <laughs> just sweep the game, baby. <laughs> so um, you're sweeping the game yeah. with your hop hip, and then you get the slowpoke well. And instead of going down the ladder like a fucking cretin, you just you go down with your jump bluff already fully evolved. You just yeah. You just that, as down. Kurt as Kurt charges off to go take on Team Rocket and falls yeah. down the well, you just float down on your little hop yeah. hip. Exactly because I mean he has he has no hop hip. He has no bitches. So you get down mm-hmm. there and he's like, oh no, my back. And you're like, oh, I'll fix this. So you go over, you fight the rock grunts, and you I'm stop look them from mutilating these poor slowpoke. Once you get strength and you can push a boulder, uh, you can get King's Rock underneath it. Oh, mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah, that's how you get your slow king, so baby. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. So, so you, yeah. you chase oh, off also, Team Rocket. Yeah. But it, during that chase off is when you realize that, you know, it is Team Rocket, the same Team Rocket that you defeated. Uh, that somebody else you know, defeated, you know, a few years ago. True, someone else defeated uh, a few years prior. Yeah. But and everybody's like, "Oh, they're back!" And you're like, "What the? What the hell are you talking about? They're back!" Mm. Yeah. And then your rival, before you continue on battles, even talk shit about Team Rocket. He's like, yeah. "They only feel strong in a group, bunch of yeah. weaklings." It sounds like uh, Gladian in Sun and Moon. <laughs> oh, fucking Sasuke yeah. Chidori. You guys like that? Uh, you guys like that second? rival battle because that one yeah. it's kind of that, tough it was i do it, it actually caught me off guard because i'm like yeah. all right cool off to the forest because you can go to the forest before, before. you battle the gym yeah. yeah before you battle the gym and then you're like all right i'm gonna do, i beat team rocket i'm gonna just walk on in the forest yeah and he's just like hold it <laughs> especially since like if you choose quilava he has a toto or mm-hmm. he has a mm-hmm. crocodile. crocodile yeah and crocodile. i mean unless like what did you what have you unless you caught a bell sprout like what what do you uh, realistically or hop it i mean i mean, I mean duh, it. like yeah leech seed hello yeah hello. Uh, forehead I, I mean his ghastly is tough and then yeah. his uh i still think it's a soup at the time but it doesn't it know bite and stuff like i think it's pretty powerful yeah uh let me see the rival so for that battle uh basically if you are if you did pick cyndaquil it has ga- uh, he has ghastly zubat and crocodile and it does have bite on the zubat yeah, but it has water gun which yeah. kills your Kulaba, let, me, let so, me just yeah. do a this quick aside here to just show how much we love gen 2 uh patrick and i went to japan i don't know if i've mentioned this before on the podcast <laughs> may have mentioned it may have mentioned it a couple times yeah but there was one day where patrick and i just stayed at our hotel all day and just played hard gold and soul silver the entire day it was so from sun, from sun up to sundown it was like Damn. the best time it was just playing jid 2 imagine just, you know, just it really just shows like how good imagine it is, spending like, you know, a day in the holy land in a hotel room oh it was great I think, no i think it was my foot i i got yeah. a, unfortunately we walked and i got blessings trench, on my feet you got trench foot yeah i could not freaking move <laughs> that sucks Man, I want to go to Japan. That was that was a great day. I'll never forget it was, that. It was, then, it was we like, went to the Pokemon Town, or we went to the yeah, Pokemon Center. The Pokemon that Center. Was so cool. That was yeah. so cool. So, Pokemon Trip 2023, Japan. Let's go. Yes, sir. Dude, right let's, now, let's sir. do it. Like legit. Like I'm not even kidding. I want to do that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so back, yeah, back, back to the to story Crystal. again. Yeah, back to Crystal Gang. Uh, uh, you make it yeah. to Goldenrod City where you mm-hmm. battle Whitney the Bay, mm-hmm. and either her... you get the sm- you're, you're, you're well, the that, you get the you get the daycare. Yeah, you get to the daycare. You yeah, get... but that's not a. Like... I think that was only yeah. like a, a like a story thing in Heart yeah. Soul Silver. It's kind of just there. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, unless you play Crystal, the then you get the. Egg. Oh well, actually, I guess you get Togepi egg before. Yeah. But also, you get yeah. you get the Eevee in Goldenrod as well, right? Only after well, you go to Ecker. You have to go to Ecker. Oh, yeah. Then you have to come yeah. Back. Yeah. Okay. So either you yeah. have high IQ in Goldenrod and make the trade for the Machop, or you have low IQ and you brute force your way through Whitney. Yeah. <laughs> just with Typhlosion. Just pure money. I had a Typhlosion when I beat Whitney. I won't Yeesh. lie. Yeah. 
Dang. I never had a struggle with Whitney. I feel like I mentioned that before, but I never struggled with Whitney. And I feel I don't struggle with her now. That. I remember yeah. struggling yeah. with her back in the day, but not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Even back then, I don't think I struggled. But, I'm the kid yeah. that in red and blue, I had a level like 37, 38 Charizard trying to slash Misty's Starmie to death. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it works. I... It works. All right. But, yeah, so, yeah, you beat you beat uh, Whitney. You go up. You, she cries. You, yeah, she cries. You go to Sudowoodo. Uh, you go through it. You go to Ecritique. And that's where you get to the Burn Tower. So that's where you first encounter the legendary beast, Entei Raikou Suicune. And depending on what game you're playing, either Gold Silver or if you're playing Crystal, you either see or do not see Yusin. Mm. And that's where they're all like, oh, here's the backstory. There's birds and seeing shit on fire. Boom, boom, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. And so, depending on your ver which version you're playing, you can encounter all of them as roaming or just two of them. Exactly. So, after that, you battle Morty. Uh, he tells him tells you that Morty. he yeah Morty I turned myself into a gym leader. <laughs> I only got four. Can we talk about that gym for their own ghastly Morty? The gym for in general, like that was one of the worst des gym designs. The freaking dialogue. the falling, yeah. Oh yeah, it was Hell, yeah. really dumb. What, you, there's like no, you just have to guess. It's so right. stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there's also no dumb. Johto representation. <laughs> there's literally Man, only one yep. Johto. Pokemon literally no mystery. Come on. Nope. It Isn't wouldn't it have made a That's difference. Embarrassing. It could have just replaced Ghastly. Uh, you finish up in Ecritique. You go over to... Well, you end up in Olivine because that's where the port is to get to Sea and Wood. Mm -hmm. Bec but Olivine doesn't have the next gym leader. But you find out. You go to the Light Tower where the gym leader Jasmine is. Oh, you meet is, your rival and yeah. he bitches at you that the gym leader's not there. Yeah. And Which would like, start oh, the yeah, trend of gym leaders not being in their gym. Yeah. Jasmine... Jasmine wasn't well, there. It makes sense. Like I don't understand why the gym leaders need to be in their gym twenty four seven. Yeah, they're like, like almost like, make, like they're they're, they're humans. Like the, they're like, like the mayor almost of like their town, or like, like, a, like the representative of their town. What's it? It's like the Disney line thing. Take a ticket, and wait for <laughs> wait for your time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think honestly, like gym challenges should only be like once a week, mm -hmm. and everybody who like wants to participate needs to come in. They only work one get... day a week. Wow. That's fine. like you a, do no, a okay. weekend. No, I'm saying like oh, five, I mean, no, five I mean, days we, a week, forty we saw, hour, forty hour weeks, bro. We saw with <laughs> the works. new uh, trailer, they have that one gym leader who's a streamer, so she's got ult she's got oh, alternate sources of income. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know. Yeah, you got to get your hustle. So yeah, she like got, Jasmine's uh, thing with Nessa. Oh, Nessa's in a control. model. Yeah, Jasmine's yeah, in control of the light tower. Like duh. Yeah, like I don't know about that. I I kind of like this idea that you know the gym leaders are not just people who stand in like their gym and. Yeah, they're, with they're people. They're people. They're not people. Like, they're not people. They're, they're not just people. badges. They're just, they're just, they're just, yeah, they're, they're, just, just, they're just badge dispensers, bro. Yeah. Yeah, they're badge dispensers with a pulse. Yeah, so you get up to the top of the light tower, and you see Jasmine tending to the Ampharos, whose basically only purpose in life is to be in this light tower and does not lives leave. Lives in a cage. Well, yeah, lives in a cage. Bono wouldn't know what, Bono wouldn't know what that Pokemon is. I would, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't know what that Pokemon is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Bono got when no you saw bitches. it for the first time, were you like, when do I get to catch this? <laughs> no, I, was just, I think by that point I was like, oh, everybody has Marie. Why don't I have one? Yeah. So yeah, basically it's just like it's sick. I need you to go to CN Wood and uh, get the medicine for me. Mm -hmm. So you use a Pokemon with Surf to get all the way over there. You uh, basically get the medicine. Got to go all the way back. Give it to the Ampharos, and then Jasmine's like, okay, I'm ready to fight you. But at that time, you could also fought in the fifth yeah, which gym leader. Chuck. And also, yeah. if, again, if you're in Crystal, that's when you see Suicune for the first time. Right, exactly. You see Suicune, so. at least that's not in the, the Burn Tower. Don't first time you can the Shuckle, or never give it back. Yeah, mm -hmm. Shuckle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Shucky the Shuckle, never yeah. give it back. Also, uh, during the surfing, you find the islands. I mean, that's exactly where Lugia is going to be. And an interesting design. Mm -hmm. I don't like the World Islands. Whirlpool. Yeah, yeah I don't like islands, it either. But. Um, but it, it's it's cool. Like, also, I mean, you have more to discuss. I, I guess if we're not gonna get the sea fun islands, like at least we get those. Also, another interesting thing about uh, CN Wood is that if you release all your Pokemon that could learn Surf, and you just have nothing to get back, you could talk to a character over there, and they will give you a Tentacle with Surf. I don't know so. if that's in Gold and Silver and Crystal. I think it's in Hard Gold and Silver. I think that's in Hard Gold. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. 
Yeah, because I'm but... pretty sure you can soft lock yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They, that far ahead. they <laughs> yeah, like literally sure. were like, you just get fucked. Yeah, but, so, uh, but it is where you get fly too. So they yeah. just in case if you did delete all of your Pokemon that yeah. serve, you get fly. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Besides, that's I think true. you can also catch like Pokemon in the water, so you mm-hmm. can't really get soft lock with that. Yeah, but not if you don't yeah. have a not if you don't have a rod. Yeah, not if you don't have a rod. A rod. You, you got a rod. rod. Yeah. yeah. So you battle Chuck, get the badge. Go over to Olivine, battle with uh, Jasmine, get the badge over there, and then you got to head all the way over to Mahogany Town, which Team Rocket has taken over. Had assuming that you haven't been there prior, at that point, Team Rocket's Maybe. taken over. The Team Rocket plot really just like condensed to that section of the game. Yeah, well that like, and also they, the they have the power. slowpoke well, and yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like yeah. as soon as you do that. It's that, and then the radio tower. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it's, a lot of people complain about the radio tower being so long and boring mm-hmm. because it's just level, you know, twenty grunts that you can mm-hmm. already, or like level yeah. fifteen to twenty just grunts. Sweeping them, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I don't think it's a, a little bit, but I like complain more think... about it in Heart Gold Soul Silver because you have to do like the whole, like you get dressed up, then you go there, then you get busted, then you go there, find out the guy's not there, then you go to the basement of the department building. And then have to work your way back up the tower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas in this one, I think you just go straight up the tower. I think mm-hmm. I, so. So this this is my argument: is that you just beat them at Slowpoke Well, you beat them at you know Mahogany Town, and right. their last ditch effort is to try to hunker down in Goldenrod and acquire this tower for whatever reason they want to like broadcast to like maybe try to get more support or something. Mm. And call their boss essentially. <laughs> They call their boss too to come and help them, but so this is their like their last stand. So I don't understand why people want to be like, well, why should we have to like deal with all these grunts and it's boring and I should just we, it shouldn't be a thing. Like you're you're taking out an organization first. You have to realize that you're one person taking out an organization, and they're gonna they're bunkered down in this like tower. Like it shouldn't be easy. Again, it well, is think... unfortunately too easy because of the grunt levels. And right. the disparity but if they have like more challenging like yeah uh, you'd constantly have to go back to the pokemon center i feel like to heal and heal and heal if they are like like to your level or rough to your true. level and that would be probably more detrimental to then being able to sweep and i would complain through. more about silfco than i would gold the radio tower right yeah like a silfco like but nobody complains about silfco because yeah it's right like, yeah uh, oh it was really cool yeah. blah, blah, blah. but it also did have a healing station in it so yeah. in the building yeah right right but i i think that if they just made tougher enemies i i think the whole golden rod section would be better and yeah well that liked. archer i think only has three pokemon now yeah, yeah like again it's just missed opportunities with mm-hmm. like how powerful they could have been because it's also a really good place to train like it that would have been a really good spot to like level up like some more your weaker pokemon Mm -hmm. because again there's nowhere to train after this yeah uh so yeah basically you get to mahogany town and they're like oh yeah team rocket's taking over and they're doing some crazy shit at the lake of rage which is north of mahogany so you go up there and uh lance the champions just like hey check this out over there there's a gyarados that's been uh, manipulated by team rocket and it's like a different color like, it looks really, it looks really strange. You should check it out. Find out it's a red Gyarados, so it's your shiny, basically. And you get to catch it. It's like a little 30-something, I believe. And, it's a 30. Yeah. So, then they're like, oh, that was weird. Hey, we should, like, deal with them over at uh, the Mysterious Building. So, Go. it drops a red yeah. scale um, yeah. after you either oh, catch right. it or defeat it. Yeah, And yeah. if you take it to Mr. Pokemon from the beginning of the game, he gives you the EXP share. Mm-hmm. So right. I'm just going real quick because I was looking at it like trying to like pace where that battle would be in the story for Gen One. So that that would be the final battle again because you're fighting what's his face Archer, and that's supposed to be like your final encounter with Team Rocket, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the final battle with Giovanni, he only he does have well at least you know final battle with him. He only has four Pokemon, mm-hmm. and I think the. Other, I think he only has three, and then the battle when you battle him in Celadon, he only has three. So I guess it's the same. It's not too much of a difference, but the levels yeah. are definitely different because he's got yeah. 37, 37, 35, and 41. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I'm pretty sure like it's King Skong, it's uh, Rhydon, no, Rhydhorn. Rhydhorn, Nidoqueen, mm-hmm. and Nidorino. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, 
three of those are tough Pokemon. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> As yeah, opposed so. to Archer, who has Houndour, Houndoom, and then I can't remember what his third one is. I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah so you can just see the disparity. And I think that, again, if they did a little bit more balancing and made it a t- tiny bit tougher, I think you would have like a good section of the game where instead of people just like complaining. I feel like that's the reoccurring complaint that we've had throughout all of our episodes of Babbler so far is that we always feel like, oh yeah, it just needs to be a little bit tougher. It's just a little bit tougher. And every and game again, seems uh, to have that complaint on it. But it's three I, I, Rocket executives, Petrol with his team of six with five coughings and one wheezing. <laughs> and then Ariana, who has Arbok, Vileplume, Murkrow. And then Archer, who has Houndour, Houndoom, and a coughing. Then you get to Mahogany Town to the Mysterious Building. And Lance kills, fucking kills somebody with his Dragonite and Hyper Beam. Like, straight he up just obliterates them. them. He goes full on Exodia on them. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh yeah, here's a secret passageway. <laughs> yeah, and you discover a secret hideout in a shack yeah. in Mahogany Town. Yeah, so you have to go through that. You have to uh, basically discharge all the electrodes that are powering their generator. And the radio all, like, broadcast. Yeah, which are like level 35, I think. Like level 30, 35. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so you knock those out. Save the you day. You literally can run from them and save yeah, the day. Exactly. You don't have to battle them. You just have to encounter and run. Exactly. So once you clear that up, then Lance is like, oh yeah, they're doing stuff over at the radio tower in Goldenrod. Oh, so. they also had the Murkrow puzzle, which I thought was cool. Oh, yep. yeah. Yeah. The, the Murkrow. So to unlock the door to get to the generator where the electrodes are, you have to talk to these Murkrows that have passwords but uh, you, they're also, are they locked behind rocket grunts or do you just have to yeah. find them? Yeah, because yeah. the grunts will be like, I'm not going to tell you the password. And then you talk yeah. to the Murkrow and it's like, oh, Giovanni's the best or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So then you head over to the Goldenrod radio tower where they've taken over the hijacked it. You got to find basically the head of the radio tower. So you go through that, like we mentioned before, where you have to like go through the basement and then you have to go all the way up and then you go back down. It's like, all this stuff just to get them out of there. You have to clear out all the grunts. Evict them. You have to serve yeah. them an eviction notice. Exactly. Slip. Yeah, you give them the eviction notice. They finally get out. Day is saved for now. Well, I think, honestly, for the rest of it. Because I don't think you see Team Rocket after this. No, you don't. That's it. No. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's why I was like, it's literally like an injection of Team Rocket at yeah. this story. And then that's it. Yeah. Then after that, you just go through like your standard, like, clear the gym challenge, beat the Elite Four, go to Kanto. You can beat Price before or after. It really doesn't right. matter. Exactly. You're not yeah. pressured Price into is, going to the Price radio is, tower right away. Price is indifferent to the whole situation going on. He's like, I'm just going to do my job and just keep my head down. Right. Whitney uh, does nothing as her hometown is being terrorized by people. Exactly. She's, she's just She has to stay in the gym. Like, yeah. She doesn't yeah, want her to be just yeah. to stand there. Mm-hmm. She's a badge exactly. dispenser. Uh, exactly. Actually, she's not even a badge dispenser. The other girl in her gym is a badge dispenser because she had to convince Whitney yeah. to give you the badge in the first exactly. place. Exactly. That would that would be grounds for termination right there at other jobs. All right. I'm thinking somebody yeah. needs to, we need Get an evaluation. Promotion. I think we need a promotion for that gym for that gym trainer. All right. Yeah. So you then get to Kanto. Uh, you go well, through. Well, not yet. Yeah. You gotta well, go to Blackthorn City. Yeah. Oh yeah. You gotta deal with all the stuff about Claire being a Karen. Uh, Claire being a Karen. Yeah. You gotta go through all that stuff. Um. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you guys know that uh, her and Lance are cousins? Yeah, her and Lance oh. are cousins. Didn't know that. Yeah. But I guess it makes yep. sense. You beat Claire. I think you finding go... that Kingdra yeah. for the first time is tough. Oh my I god. Am. Kingdra freaking sucked. Like, that... the battle against. The battle against, by the way. Yeah. I love Kingdra and it's amazing, but it sucks to battle against. Because unless you got a Dragonair or a Jatini from the shop in Goldenrod at the beginning of the game, like, realistically, what dragon move are you using against it? That's the only thing it's super effective against. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, yeah, pretty much uh, what do you have yeah. against it? Yeah, because Bono really. with his Ampharos yeah. right. is only still <laughs> neutral damage. Yeah. So, as I'm reading it right here, it says Rainbow Wing and Clear Bell are a gift from the manager. Like, once you free him, where do you get the thing in Silver to go fight Lugia? It's not the one in Pewter City, because that would be way too late. Um, well, in Crystal, you, you get it in Peter City. In, in, yeah, in that in one, don't you get it from the Silver? Silver, that's where you get it. 
yeah, you get your... Oh, because it just says right here, Rainbow Wing and Clear Bell. It doesn't say a Silver Wing. So I don't know, like, in Silver, where you get the Silver Wing to go and get Luki. I have a feeling you get it from the Komodo Girls, but let me double check. Wait, you get a Clear Bell? Yeah, wait, what does the Clear Bell do? The Clear Bell is what you do to fight Suicune in front of the tower. Silver Wing, you get it from Pewter City. Yeah. Literally so get it in, in Pewter City. Silver, you can't get Lugia until Kanto? That doesn't seem right. Hey, you fight your gym. You fight your rival one last time. Again, seeing only that he has a cold yeah. bat. He hasn't mm -hmm. learned to love yet. Yeah. And then before you go battle the Elite Four, he stops you again to be like, hey, I thought about things. Or, or no, no. I think that's like the second time you go to rematch the Elite Four, isn't it? Okay, then yeah, I think Serebi I... might be missing something there because you're supposed. it says you get it from going, from beating the guy. This gets yeah. Silverwing, but it's just not on the website for whatever reason. Huh, weird. Yeah, that wouldn't make sense that in gold you get the rainbow wing, but you wouldn't get the silver wing for silver. Yeah. That doesn't it just, that just doesn't make sense. Right, 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 exactly. So yeah, you beat the Elite Four. Uh you get a ticket to go on the SS Aqua to go to Kanto, where you end up at the Vermilion port. And uh you gotta go through the motions over there, where you gotta well, go to the First you have to like realize that you just got to Kanto or yeah. Vermilion City and you're after you the tears have just subsided because of joy that you feel yeah of getting away from Jodo visiting. and going yeah. back to the holy right. land then you run the right land. into a Snorlax and you're like oh cool let me just you know oh wait I don't have Pokey flute. flute oh wait yeah. where is it exactly it's in and my other game it's in my other bag yeah the wild Pokemon don't scale to you so they're still like as weak as what, if you no know, not even the trainers I think all the trainers are still like level 27 or 32 yeah. sir mm mm so I think you have to go north because you can't go yeah, right because exactly. of the Snorlax. Yeah, you, you gotta go, go north. You, you gotta go through Saffron. You gotta go through you can't Saladon. Go through, yeah, so, yeah. You can't go through Diglett Cave either. Mm -mm. Nope. You go to nope. Saffron and then you yeah. go to Cerulean. Yeah. Cerulean. Yeah, and that's where you the encounter the rocket. Well, no, no. You gotta go to the power plant mm -hmm. as well. Talk to the guy there to be like, hey, I'm missing the machine part. You go over, you find the grunt. He ends up being in the Cerulean. Don't you have to go to all the way through Fuchsia? Like, don't you literally do like a loop? Yeah, yeah. You put it on a loop. Yeah, you basically, you got to go to Fuchsia. You got to go to Cerulean. I'm trying to. My brain is short circuiting a little bit. You well, I think you have to go to the power plant and then go through right. Rock. Get the you get the part and then, then you go through. Uh, you have to go to Lavender Town because you have to go to the radio tower there. Right. To get the expansion card. Exactly Which for the Pokemon. always vibe me the wrong way that they built a fucking tower, a radio yeah. tower of all things. Where like it was the cathedral? Tower. Yeah, it right. was literally a graveyard, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, nope, it's uh, it's now Big Corpo has gone over with their with their radio tower." Yeah, we don't care about your uh, Kate's anymore. Mm -mm. No. And so then after that, you can go to Celadon and um, yeah, Pewter, and go to the game corner in Celadon, yeah, and uh, do Diglett's Cave and stuff like yeah. that. Exactly. So yeah, that's where it really starts to expand is when you get the the radio the expansion card. Yeah, but, yeah uh, it's pretty linear until you get mm -hmm. that. Yeah, but that rocket grunt that has a machine part is like really the last true like encounter of Team Rocket in this game. But uh, after that, he, he didn't even he, fight him. He mm -hmm. just throws it in the. In yeah, the he throws it in the water. Yeah, it runs away. Oh, and also you totally just ruin Missy's date. <laughs> When she's yeah. with that guy, right. and she's like, "Okay, right. I guess well, that was an ass, though." Yeah, it exactly. It's just some boy. Yeah, it was her. It was her rebound from Ash. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, you do that battle her, and once you have seven of the eight badges in Kanto, you go over to Cinnabar Island, and Blue is there, and he's like, "Okay, well, you... you don't. I don't think you have to have seven badges. I think you just go there, and then he'll be like, you challenge me after you get all the badges in.'" Canto. Right, right yeah and then once you get the badges he's like okay you're i you're worth challenging or battling i guess so he goes back mm. to his gym in viridian go through that and you you wipe the floor with him as you should you can also visit yeah. your player's home and the mother right. is just strangely at peace with everything yeah yep. she's like oh i don't know like my boy is somewhere out there i hope he's okay question yeah. mark yep. <laughs> question yeah. mark yep <laughs> And, 10 years old by the way yeah and he still has an all nes right. in his room or an snes all right but uh yeah it's like all like dusty and stuff also you get i think you get massages from gary's or from blue's sister at that massages house. quote unquote you beat blue 
And you talk to Prester Oak. He's like, okay, here's a, a pass to get to Mount Silver. And then that's where you go to Rattle Red. But you got to be very, rattle? very... To Rattle Red. Rattle Bed. You got to rattle yeah. the bed of red. So, yeah, yeah but you oh, got to make sure um, you Yeah. Fucking Celadon City is like the, is where you can get Larvitar before Mount Silver. Wait, really? It's in the game corner. It's oh. the prize in the game corner. Oh, yeah. It replaces Porygon. Well, it's 9,999 well, it it? coins. I, th- I think Porygon's available, but I think it replaces it as like the most expensive Pokemon. That's basically Pokemon Crystal, but then they, of course, re-released it for the Virtual Console on January 26, 2018, which, again, make sure you get it now if you want to have it on your system. Buy it. Consume product. Uh, But, yeah, we mentioned it before, but in this one, because we didn't have a mobile event back in the day to get the GS Ball, they added it into Mm -hmm. the game this time around. So you can get Celebi. Mm -hmm. You get the GS Ball to get Celebi, which is level 30 in the Ilex Forest. More importantly, you can get shiny Celebi from doing that event shiny celebi and it's just yeah. it's just nice that they gave it to us they didn't have to but they did and i respect the heck out of them for doing that um yeah and the cutscene for it's really cool too it's just nice as like finally like having that happen in your own game instead of watching it on youtube or whatever but uh yeah right. that's pokemon crystal need i babble more <laughs> uh obviously it's a 10 out of 10 for me but what about you guys the same time. Uh, 9 out of 10 yeah Where's the, where's the room improving yeah. for you? Where's your where's your heart? Are going soul silver? <laughs> yeah. Because I would love to base it my score on like what it was at like at the, like at the time. Yeah, it would have been a ten out of ten. But like you know, we've come so far in terms of game yeah. development that like right. I can't judge it based on like all the stuff that's happened so far. Mm-hmm. You know, like the jumps in graphics, the jumps in mechanics. Yeah. I yeah, I will say know, that if stuff if like that. it had yeah. this split for. Mm-hmm. Ability, not ability, like, like yeah, the moves, yeah, the moves of the split as well, I think would have been better. Uh, I personally don't mind it because, mm-hmm. again, I know how to work around it. Exactly. The game exactly. is not hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game I, we're always fun. doing challenges to make it harder, so mm-hmm. harder. Uh, but exactly. it's it's still the best gen, of course, hands down. Easy. Plus, it, you know, we talked about it. It has its detractors. There's no representation. You are kind of like level capped yeah. everywhere you go. Stuff but like that. So, it, I think it I opened know. doors, at least for like our generation of like, it's like, it's like how they had it in the, the NES and SNES days where there was like the, like the, like the playground secrets and like t- hints and tricks exactly. and stuff where you're like, oh my gosh, did you know about this Lapras that showed up on Fridays in the Slowpoke well or whatever it was. And uh, it's just stuff like that where I just added to the mythos and just the overall just immersion and fun of these games. And it just brings back a lot of memories for me, I feel like. Um, yeah, I just, I love everything about Generation 2. Uh, definitely one of my favorites for sure. And uh, is there anything else that we need to add about these ones? Or are we think we covered everything? No. Yeah? Well, I was looking it up real quick just to see, but yeah, you can't catch Mewtwo in either gold or mm-hmm. silver no. or crystal. No, you have to bring it over. See, it was saving Mr. Patrick. So, yeah? did you watch the last episode? Did that one come out? The Gen 3 one? The Fire and Leaf Green? What are you talking about? Did the oh, Fire, Fire and Leaf Green Oh, episode... the episode. No, 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 no. It's coming out in a couple days. Okay, so, well, Patrick won't have that context, but at the end of that episode, we go into detail of, like, what we would want to see not necessarily like a let's go but like a canto sequel yeah. like kind of how gen 2 was to you know gen 1 and like updated the region and all kinds of it'll make a lot more sense once you see it but would you like to see a gen 2 not as a remake like in heart gold and soul Silver, but like a true two sequel of the johto region sure i mean anytime you revisit johto is always a pleasure um i think that it if you're gonna redo johto i want you to make it more open right it has to to be big because everything is so clumped together well not just like like space wise but i mean just like because you know how like after gym four you can go left or right technically the only way to get the plot to go forward is to go right Mm -hmm. sorry left um i i think that if you go to johto you need to find a way to make it more not only can you go left or right at that point, but when you go left or right, there's more beyond 
what we already know. I want yeah, them Alex, to like, can you pull up the map for on... Shoto real quick? Yeah. Yeah. I want them to build on Shoto's areas and regions. Oh yeah. Uh that was for me I, I was thinking that. like they had this you know, they have this the event with Sinjo. I would love for them to explore more of like the northern region of Johto and like kind of like how yeah, Black really and cool. White 2 had uh, like, you know, it gave you like the whole other half of Unova. I would love mm -hmm. for them to expand like what's yeah. north of Johto. Expand this what's desert more area to the, to the west of uh, Lake of Rage. Like expand to the mountains over here. You could expand. Right? I would love to yeah. see like Blackthorn City like more modernized i guess because it is kind of like dilapidated be cool too mm. yeah, that yeah. Cool so yeah too. we we did go into like a lot of stuff of like what we would like to see like i would have i think it said like we would want to see like um cycling road like added more to mm. and stuff like that like what areas well, do you think would be like ripe for like change like do you think they'd make goldenrod like yeah a, if you're gonna if you're gonna add kanto into the johto remake as well uh i would definitely love to see kanto just done correctly given more time just yeah, i see or so just that's, that, that's, that's, that was another thing i was gonna ask not, if they yeah. redid a sequel to johto would you want them to do kanto as well or yeah. just stick to johto yeah. i mean yeah, obviously I was, the question is uh, yeah but you know okay so if if they were to take away kanto you have to give me more johto oh you way have more to give me way more yeah you have to give me mountaintops icy areas you have to give me give me an area like uh, cerulean cave Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, expand see like the Whirling Islands. Expand. Um, they actually kind of did in Heart, uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver when you go to the Battle Tower. Like that section isn't actually there. Mm -hmm. um, or is it the Safari Zone? Yeah, where the new Safari Zone is. They expand yeah, the new Safari Zone. Yeah. Yeah. So like you'd have you'd have to give me more of that. Mm -hmm. But I, realistically, I would I would rather see Kanto again, just mm -hmm. actually properly done. Yeah, of course, of course. I think you, I think there's so much potential with an extra with with Kanto than there is with just more Johto. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of old episodes, I actually have watched most of your episodes, and oh, well, um, thank you. I I have a lots of uh, opinions about some of your episodes. Um, Gen three, I thought was really good, and I agree with most of your comments. Gen four, uh, as absolute trash, I. <laughs> I, anyone who likes Gen 4, you're fooling yourself. The only thing that's good that came out of Gen 4 was competitive Pokemon and some evolutions that were definitely needed for some Pokemon. <laughs> um, everything else is trash. Uh, oh, man. I liked your guys' um, Gen 5 discussions because I never actually played Gen 5. Um, mm. Yeah. Or uh, that was black and white. Yeah, it, black and white. So yeah, um, you should give those a shot. Maybe honestly, I might give black two and white two yeah. a shot. I, yeah, I think something from there. Honestly, it oh, was one hundred percent. It literally yeah. goes hard gold soul silver. It, I mean, for me, it's hard gold soul silver. Yeah, and then black and white two. Totally, I can see the argument for like the other way around. But like, if you were literally never played a Pokemon game and were like gonna die tomorrow, and you would like, I need to experience Pokemon, then I would be here are the games that you need to play. Yeah. Dark Gold, Soul yeah. Silver, Bar None. Yeah, and then... Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I've heard good things about Black White, too. I just never tried it. Yeah. X and Y, I always like the... Uh, I actually really care about the... Um, your companions mm -hmm. in X and mm -hmm. Y, but the game itself just looks way too hand-holdy. Mm -hmm. I, I can 100%. understand it's a Pokemon game, it's supposed to be, but it's just... If you're going to hold my hand the entire time, I can that's just not yeah. fair. Exactly, um, I feel it. And then, honestly, actually, I disagreed a lot with your guys' uh, Sword and Shield um, mm -hmm. videos. I actually really, really like the direction Pokemon's going with Sword and Shield, and a lot of the complaints you guys had, uh, you guys praised an Arceus, and I was just like, that's stupid. Arceus is a tech demo. That's not even a game. And well, tech, tech demo is tech let, let's, let's go. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't think Let's Go is good either, but yeah. it's there. Right. Uh, I mean, I never completely hated Let's Go. I, I still gave it like a six out of ten. I think. But, yeah, um, like it, yeah. it's it's cool. Yeah. I, it's a way to get Pokemon Go into the hands. Yeah, into I like think. A home yeah, console. I think it's just a way of them just trying to gain some revenue so they could apply it towards bigger projects. E 
yeah, the, even though they're the biggest franchise ever. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't exactly. They yeah, need more money. Exactly, but they're still gonna give us mid at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. which is Absolutely. really sad. Yep, but, I agree. Yeah, I don't know. But, the more uh, I'm staring at it, the more ideas are popping in my head. I was thinking of like making like Olivine City like more dockyard like and like mm-hmm. doing something to. Like make Ooh, like because I'm thinking be like cool. a, a four like a four year skip and so like Jasmine's older and has like more sure of herself and stuff like that uh, and she has I don't mind young Jasmine let's just keep her the same age yeah. let's, just, let's just keep her the same but I'd yeah. like to see like Olivine redesigned Goldenrod yeah. expanded I'd like Ecrotique to be expanded like way more yeah yeah they need to add another more mystique to it some more spooky think, another yeah big I think thing... you could do a lot with like a. Uh, uh different cult like because that's where the kimono girls are so you can definitely <laughs> have like more culture yeah in critique but uh-huh. golden rod definitely just like tall buildings make it like mm-hmm. new york style yeah make it like right. like like castilia and in, in unova <sighs> totally right. they could definitely do that Expand and then i'm thinking a like forest a little bit too. yeah i was thinking oh, like definitely you know, these something. they'd have like different cultures in because you know you can see right here in the middle where ecritique is like north of that there's like a spl- i guess you have like a split where there's like a different area in the top left and then a different area to the right of uh, Lake of Rage. Mm-hmm. And then mainly I was thinking because this game kind of pioneered it, but with giving you 16 badges, maybe have the gym challenge be more than eight badges. It could be an Ooh. arbitrary number. It could be Ooh. like 12. Ooh, or, you know, see that. Bono, you're, you're, see that. you're breaking the glass. Dude. Also, what is right, this? Uh, I remember uh, in the early like betas and demos of Gold and Silver that there was a town in Lake of Rage that's why mm-hmm. there's like those houses that are still like on the side. It was originally gonna have like a full on like town there, so maybe they could I actually think bring that, that back. They could probably yeah, they could do that and have it be realized like where people started yeah. to like live there and then like mm-hmm. rage, <laughs> like rage like, yeah. got destroyed. Exactly, it's just infested by red Gyarados and gold. What would, uh... would we still be Ethan and Chris in this adventure? Or would we be? Like, I think it would be like skip. So yeah. I think it'd be like let's go. It'd be like a redesigned character of them. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, what types would you like to see added in the, in the theoretical sequel here? Let's say they add four more gems. What were the types you'd want to see? Dark. I'd say fairy, because you know it, this intergen introduced dark and steel, so yeah, it'd be only fitting dark. Yeah, they need dark, hundred percent. Dark, uh, yeah. dark. A fire type gym would be cool. Um, I mean, they'd have to add more fire type Pokemon. Yeah, they would. And yeah, exactly. what, uh, No, it's just, Jodo... it's just all Magby's. That's it. What Johto forms of Pokemon or Jotun. evolutions to Johto Pokemon do you think that could be? Oh, like I'd expanded? honestly like to see because I talked about, like I said, we talked about it in that episode mm. where I said I'd like to see like Johto or like Kanto versions of Johto Pokemon. I'd love to see Johto versions of Kanto Pokemon in here, like a like a Johtonian Pidgey, mm. or you I know, would like to jo- see Dunsparce get some love. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I, I know. One day, I know we're some, maybe maybe Gen Nine, but mm-hmm. uh, done yeah. sparse to get some love. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think if you made Spinarak and it's evolution, does not kind of, suck. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that if you're gonna if you're gonna give some forms to Gen, uh, Gen uh, Jodo, uh, Pokemon, just look at the ones that are underperforming and see if you can't yeah. redesign them in a way that makes them look cool. Right, Sneasel needs. And I think then, uh, Sneasel needs to get rid of uh, Sneasler. Another thing we talked yeah, about please. is like instead of uh, starting in Pallet Town or in starting in New Bark in this one, what town do you think would be like a prime spot to start in? For me, I would pick Sianwood. I feel like this island mm. right here would be like a perfect like tutorial area and starting area. I'm gonna be born on Mount Silver. There, we'll be we'll do the um, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker chat where like you were like even maybe not even younger, but like just learning about pokemon on the island yeah. and then we venture off into the world yeah so i, I think it'd go i think it would be like you start off in cianwood and then like your first town you visit after you beat like the cianwood gym or whatever it is is goldenrod yeah uh i want to be born on Mount Silver. how would you just, do that just, just raised like, you go, in like, the you caves could, yeah you can see like it's just like straight shot past the rural islands yeah but like, then you also you, have to go had... through the world islands oh no i, mean, I think you... i think i think um all, which Jasmine's place again? Olivine. Olivine yeah, I can see. I Olivine think honestly, being if it. you if you give it a visual update of like it being more of like a shipyard and mm-hmm. like that's, I think that would be funny if we did do that because if you go to City Anwood, then Olivine, and then you go back to Ecartic, and it's the same option again. You can either go down or you can go right mm-hmm. to get more stuff. Right. 
but yeah, I think it, it would be cool because then, like, if we're if we're our theoretical thing, you go north to go to these two mountains or whatever this yellow thing in front of the bell tower is. Yeah, like you go also, north to I see like, what's there. I like this uh, going that way, like this way, because then you can actually go continue going forward into uh, with the seven gym, or you can go down and like again having this more options of just like which way you want to go. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, a lot of ROMs are actually starting to do like you can fight gym leaders in any order, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's a smart idea because I I like the idea of that you could just go anywhere. Yeah. It's like, just, this just is a pure gym. freedom. Like, it, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be just fall yellow brick road. It should be exactly. It, it, yeah. Adventure through. It's just one thing that's just kind of been fallen on the most recent Pokemon games is that it's just too handholdy on like where it's going to take you. I mean, yeah, there's, it's good to kind of give you an idea of like, oh yeah, you gotta, you're going to have to do this at some point, but like, let me play the way that I want to play. But it almost seems like Scarlet and Violet is going to be like that, but we won't really yeah. know until it comes out. But I, um, I mean, there's, there's four different things yeah. that are three. Yeah. Like, like three or four world. different like paths that you could go on of like what your priority is set in. So, yeah, and yeah. it's. I I'm hopefully optimistic for uh, yeah, Scarlet and Violet. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm totally optimistic think the... about it right now, but we'll see when it comes out. It's just it's not going to be that long from now. Did right. you just, uh, just see the Pokemon just standing still though? I oh, did. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope it was just for the trailer and that they yeah, actually so... like that move. Okay, so context for the viewers out there. Uh, so we're recording this on October 21st right now. And I know that Scarlet and Violet, at least when I release this episode, it's only like a few days away. But there was uh, some trailers that came out around this time where it's like they show like like a Jigglypuff that has a Terrastalize with it. And it's just standing there in the area. It's just like not doing anything. But yeah. there are some people that were invited by the Pokemon company to go to the headquarters and play like an hour-long demo of Scarlet and Violet. And they said that the Jigglypuff over there was uh, was actually moving around in that area. It was walking around. It wasn't just stagnant. That was just for the trailer. Oh, my God. But, um, oh, yeah, my there's God. actually a lot of news that came out today. Or at least people, like, playing it for the first time. Like, for example, uh, Cerebi, he confirmed that there are shinies in the overworld. That he found the world... The, the first... He claims is the world's first shiny Pokemon that wasn't found by Game Freak. He found a shiny Skiddo on, the, on a cliffside. Oh. So, yeah, there's no, like, random encounters also so like you can't just like walk into the grass and find a pokemon they're all like up and out there okay I mean, yeah the, the biggest disappointment i had with rcs was that you had pokemon finally in the oval you could see them mm -hmm. and you saw them literally do nothing they, there was yeah. no interaction with them and yes i don't need you know pokemon to be like doing flamethrower and fighting yeah. each other through the sky but like yeah some interaction would be nice exactly like, bumping into a like a, a hound hour maybe like tackling the other one like it, mm. it, just something yes. because it, yeah watching them just stand around walking around was just so yeah lifeless mm -hmm. and then i mean luckily there's going to be towns in this one but like in rcs one there was just like no other just towns like to breathe it's life. just a designated yeah. areas and there's the one town yeah it, it just like it didn't breathe any life into the region it yeah. was just like here's a spot where these pokemon hang out and they don't do anything like okay exactly so yeah i'm i'm, I'm very hopeful though from what i've been hearing today like it seems like it's going to be turning out to be pretty good so i'm excited still um, that's frame rate, but hey yeah. We'll oh yeah it. yeah it's a compromise but yeah uh with all that being said thank you guys again for watching uh please share this to your friends please subscribe support us a little bit over here and also huge thanks again patrick thank you so much for joining us on this this was such a it was a pleasure yeah thank you guys for having this me. is honestly this... one of my favorite episodes we've recorded so far i've had a blast talking with you about wow this. i'll be i'll be sure to tell greg about that yeah <laughs> Good, i said uh, one wow. of i said one of <laughs> okay rate, rate the last two rate this one and last uh last episode or i guess two episodes ago uh, which one was better uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, catch you guys later. Bye. <laughs> I'm kidding.